Okay, as the bells ring, seven. Um, just want to call this actually first ever meeting of the Reading Select Board to order. The names change, the work remains the same. So, um, my name is Barry Berman, I'm the acting chair. Tonight, um, we, are, we are live on RCTV. Uh, our videographer Rob is in the back, furiously working. We're on Comcast 22 and Verizon 33. Um, so, um, tonight, let me just go over the agenda real quick. Um, we'll have uh, our liaison reports and comments, public comment. We'll hear from the town manager on uh, uh, his report. Um, we'll, we have a couple of proclamations and certifications, um, and then we're going to jump into the meeting at around 7.30. We're going to hear from the developer um, on the Lincoln Prescott, Matt Zucker, who's here today, and then also uh, learn about sort of the process and what's happening there. Uh, we're going to be joined at 8 o'clock um, by the Reading Housing Authority, where we're going to be in joint meeting discussing uh, affordable housing in Reading, maintaining the affordable housing that we have. Um, and then at 9, we're going to have a discussion on the volunteer appointment uh, subcommittee. Um, there are a number of positions that need to be filled, people whose roles are, uh, are expiring. Uh, so we're going to have a discussion on how to move forward on that. And then a change of beneficial interest, Anthony's cold fire pizza, uh, and then minutes. So um, without further ado, um, let me start to my right. Um, John? Um, actually, uh, the ongoing parade report now is a, a, a finished product. Um, the, um, the Reading Little League Baseball League and the Reading Little League Softball League combined forces uh, for the much anticipated parade. There was over 600 kids participating. Front page of the Chronicle was great today. Um, you know, showed um, kids all getting staged, you know, in the parking lot ready to go. And uh, the rain did not dampen anyone's spirits. Everybody seemed to have a really good time. Um, a matter of fact, the uh, the clown that is on the front page of there's always there's a lot of clowns that show up on the front page. I've been there myself, actually. Um, and I, I neglected to uh, bring the gift I got from the Shriners clowns. They 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 gave me a nose that they thought I should be wearing down here, but I forgot it at home, unfortunately. Um, but I'm thinking maybe I'll start wearing it on a regular basis. Uh, it might be fit. Might fit. The um, I do want to especially thank um, the band, of course, the high school band. It brought up the uh, the caboose and brought everybody into the end of the parade. But Reading Public Safety was so deeply involved in making this a success and fun. Fire trucks and you know little siren beeps and you know lights and I, I got to tell you, the, I think the kids of all ages were really having a good time. Um, and the entire parade was led by the um, Reading Police Honor Guard, which did a fabulous job. Um, and furthermore, they um, you know. Uh, Sergeant Silva did us a big favor because normally you plan these things a year in advance and we didn't have that kind of a ramp time and he was able to assemble the uh, the um, pipes and drums that we have seen in action before so they were also part of the parade it was really fun it was a great time and um, food trucks were back at the other end and there was lines everywhere everybody I think really had a good time and the plan is that um, this become an annual event as it was 60 years ago. Right, Bill? 54 was the first yep. one. Um, unfortunately, they only lasted about 10 years. We're going to hope this has a little bit longer run. So um, it's a great community day for Reading. Okay. Uncle Sam, happy engaged tonight. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have been marching? I was marching, but not there. Yeah. <laughs> True. On the shows of Triplers. Dan? Hey, thank you. Uh, two items. Uh, the Board of Health met last week on the 24th, uh, considered a couple of items. I'll go over quickly. Uh, the Massachusetts legislature is considering bills that would raise the age to purchase tobacco products to 21 and, and prohibit the sale of tobacco products in pharmacies. There was a discussion on uh, the progress of that bill. Uh, there was a, a lot of talk about adult immunizations. Um, Less, less than 50% of adults get flu shots, and it's actually not too late to get one. Uh, 
and uh, less than 25% of adults get pneumonia, shingles, and pertussis shots, which is a little more troubling. The Board of Health may consider an, an awareness program for adult vaccination. Uh, they already uh, are partnering with the pharmacies in town to uh, provide these shots. Uh, that's working well, and they're looking to extend that program. Uh, the major topic of discussion that night was uh, the pesticide regulations that they'll be bringing in front of the board. Uh, I want to get. They were, they were going to come tonight, but I think they're. No, they're putting. I'll, I'll get to. They're, they're going to okay. put it off. Okay. okay. No. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, what's being discussed? Uh, a while ago, uh, the board passed some pesticide regulations. Town council looked at them and said, "Well, the state reserves unto itself." Uh, any regulation on private property, so you can't regulate it there. Mm -hmm. the state says if you use in accordance with directions on pesticides, herbicides, you're you're fine. Um, what we're talking about here is public property, and there's a couple categories of public property. Uh, the state prohibits use of those substances on school grounds of any kind. Uh, our DPW, I understand, does not use pesticides, herbicides on our fields. So what we're really talking about is what's left the tree lawns that may or may not have substances put on either by the homeowner or by commercial firms like True Green. So that's, they can't. So, so you're talking basically about that little strip of grass that's sort of like right. on the sidewalk that and how, how do you regulate how do you define it when there's no sidewalk technically it doesn't belong to the it's, homeowner yeah and i mean he's, they're going to carry plat maps around and over the meets and bounds right. of the okay. so we're going to have to have some kind of reasonable uh way to delineate that uh the discussion <clears throat> uh on the one hand uh mr sexton brought up the issue of well uh, you want to regulate if you're going to regulate make sure the cost and the benefit are not disproportional if this is not enforceable, if it's going to be a burden to the homeowner, should we do it? Uh, the counterpoint to that argument, which was artfully made by the other members of the Board of Health, well, we don't think there's immediate effects, but there certainly could be long-term effects. Uh, and that, that's been observed. So they're going to continue that discussion at their May meeting and then formulate something to present to us in June. So other than, I, I just, because any time you're dealing with regulation, um, that you know you're doing a blanket regulation that it can impact yeah. disparate numbers and different kinds of people so yes it, it just seems that the, the stakeholders really are just individual homeowners who may or may not have that strip of grass in right. front of there i mean i don't um yeah, this, you might but so and then how, other, how, do you, how do you delineate where that boundary right. is and then are, are there any like is it you know is it the forty-five thousand different landscaping companies that work here i mean yeah, those could be okay sorry there's, there's a lot of people a lot of players a lot of moving parts and is that so. part of their discussion or uh getting into that level of detail but they will be taking it up when's the uh, meeting in may you know the day I didn't write it in my notes here. Um, I think it's <coughs> May. If you have it, if you don't, that's fine. I think it's May 15th. May 15th, so, so I'm planning to uh, be there. and uh, So presumably they'll be in after that. Yeah. Okay. Then they'll be bringing that to us at one of our June meetings uh, for consideration. Okay. Is that the main point of discussion at this point, that strip between the sidewalk and the street? It's really all that's it? left, I think, pretty much. What about uh, grounds like these or the town? The town grounds? already does not fertilize. They, they, they'll fertilize, but they don't put pesticides or herbicides on those properties. And since we own them, we can govern what goes on them and not. So that's, that's where we're at. Did you want to do that? I got, I got a little more. Oh, sorry. I didn't uh, Dan, um, just yes. to clarify, so this is just the strip of land from the end of the road to what we have the curb. to what the town owns. Is, yeah. Isn't it within so When, when the town the takes the street by eminent domain, they, they claim all the property from either the inner bound of the sidewalks mm -hmm. across the street. So the town then owns that strip. Right. And we are the uh, care, it's in our care custody control right. technically, mm -hmm. selectmen. Yeah. So we are the ones that can make regulations about it, what can go on it and not. And that's, that's we're, we're the entity that can regulate. Right, right. I that's thought why it's we, to us. we yeah. had a stake to so many feet in from the street, regardless of whether there is a sidewalk or there, there or not. Well, if, if it's, we can define it any way we want. But I, and I would suggest we do it practically. Yeah, why don't we? Okay, we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, subsequent to that uh, meeting, I was notified uh, that Heidi Pfeiffer, who's been a great member for the last year, needs, is resigning because of a conflict with the, the board's meeting schedule. I, I immediately reached out to a former candidate, Emmy Dove, that she interested, uh, indicated that she was very interested in uh, poten potentially pursuing that. So she'll be uh, submitting an application if she hasn't done that. We already have an associate. Who yeah. Help, and I pointed that out. So. Um, this is 6.30, the end of June, uh, that she's five, leaving? 5.30, right. Oh, 5.30? Oh, I'm sorry, which? Which, which is her effective day, you know? The resignation. Oh. I thought it was effective I it was, immediately. Yeah, I thought it was immediately. I didn't know that. I thought she was staying on through the end of the year. Okay. All right. The end of June. Is it? And that's, in that's what I thought. No, thank you. Right. I thought I, thought I read that. Assessors, immediate or in June? Uh, Different question, that. sorry. Okay. We'll My recollection was the end of June. One of them is the end of June. Okay. Yeah. I think both of them are. Okay. Okay. I mean, that seems to be it. I mean, they meet at like 5 o'clock. 5.30. 5.30? Yeah. 5.30. Is there a way to change them? I mean, I, no. you know, you have a lot a lot of good people who, you know, work during the day. It's tough to... I mean, she was a terrific member. Yeah. And, it's just hard to get here. I mean, is it? Is it? It's not written in stone what the time is, is it? Or it, is it? Part of the reason for doing that so staff can attend without having to, you know. Got it. You, you yeah. also have a board of selectmen liaison, and they meet Tuesdays. So. Right. All right. Understood. Okay. There, there was a reason. All right. Okay. Uh, so much for that one. Uh, the cable negotiating team is negotiating the new contract with uh, Comcast met again today. Uh, what we have done so far is uh, taken the prior contract with Comcast. Uh, uh, we have now received a new contract. Uh, Town Council has marked up all the changes. We're discussing the changes, whether they're minor, whether they're big deals. Some are big deals, some are not. And we have our own wish list. So uh, at our next meeting, those will all three be folded together into a counter proposal, which the group will review. That, group, uh, that team will meet again on May 29th. Two to four, they meet during the day because of uh, Dan, who's, on, who, who's on that? Uh, I'll review that again briefly. Uh, Matt Cronellis, Jane Miller, uh, Kevin Ferrula, Town IT, myself, John Doherty, Gail Dowd, uh, Julian Carr, School IT, Jake McAleer from RCTV, Phil Rushworth, RCTV, and Eric Russell, who's the town council rep. Oh, good. Okay, so we got a good, yeah, state, good group of stakeholders. Yeah, okay. we have a long list of assets. Well, good. <laughs> and uh, for the board's consideration, I have previously circulated and again sent out tonight a uh, request that I think came from uh, the Methuen Community Television Executive Director Karen Hayden that uh, we consider supporting a uh, Senate bill. Uh, <coughs> See, don't have the S number in front of me, but that one uh, eight five. Seven. Yes, th there's a suggested letter that is should be sent to Kathleen O'Connor Ives, who's the uh, Ways and Means Chair from the Senate, and I would also suggest uh, that we copy our complete uh, delegation on that also. So, does everyone had a chance to look that over at some point? Yeah. Uh, you have a is this is this <laughs> the um, the one that basically kind of mandates the HD? Yeah. And uh, can you yeah. just go over it really, really? Sure. We're gonna, it would. Uh, it would uh, create uh, HD. It would, uh, I think, pretty much require that uh, at least one channel in HD for uh, local access TV be made available, and that a program guide functionality similar to what you have already on regular TV. So you could figure out what's going yeah. on. Yeah, you don't have to look on the website and set your thing manually. That's one of the things that was yeah. in the asks too, wasn't it? If I it, remember it correctly. was, but this would uh, give us a more of a force if this were. Uh, I'm assuming this is supported by RCTV. Oh yeah. Well, the whole group today was very happy oh, okay. about it. Yeah. Okay. So if uh, so, you know, I intended to send this letter myself personally. Are we going to do this as a board? I would suggest we do it I as think a board. It's probably a good idea yeah. to support it as a board, but so I so deferred everybody else's thoughts on it. I mean, it are, it's it represents almost identically one of the things that we had on our wish list of things for RCTV. And um, we do have precedent now as a board supporting outside legislation, what we did with the gas. Yes, we do. Yeah, when it affects us. When, uh, when sure. there's an impact. And 
Um, I think that was the key that we did right, that because right. we felt like it was affecting Reading residents, and I think this fits those same. There are negotiations, and it especially is, is right. timely right now. And if it comes part of what they have to do to right. for everybody, then it's just one less thing we have to ask them for. Right. So, would you like a motion? If uh, uh, we can have more discussion, okay. uh, I'm going to move that the board uh, issue a letter under Chairman Berman's name in support of uh, the S.1857, an act supporting community access television. Uh, send that letter to the uh, Casey Lewis. Well, to the Ways and Means Chair of the Senate with copies to Lewis, uh, Dwyer, and Jones. Right. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. And there's a sample letter included. Um, any further discussion on it? I just have one question, Dan. You've yep. obviously gone through it well. Are there any downsides to this? Nobody seemed to see any. Uh, I mean, it's it's. They could argue back. It's it's a cost to them to mm -hmm. provide the bandwidth. Uh, RCTV actually transmits everything in high def, mm -hmm. but they can't receive it and transmit it to us through the cable system mm -hmm. in high def. But if it's on YouTube, it's in high def. Right. So this yeah. would uh, go a long way in the. The only thing the downside is yeah. it yeah. could be used at the bargaining table. Is we got to you know this is what you want. Yeah. This is another cost that we have. Yeah, they could. And you know. It detracts from the deal um, from their side, but I think that that's yeah. outweighed by the benefit. Yeah, I, I would have to argue that. Particularly if this becomes law, I mean, yeah. that's that kind of mitigates that argument. Right. Well, but that's never going to happen by the time we get done no. with our. As, as I would argue myself, the benefits seem to outweigh the costs of, of this regulation. So. Okay. Right. Anything other discussion? Ready for the vote? Oh, we have a. Stephen Crook, and yes. a member of the RCTV board, I would definitely encourage you to support this. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank right. you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Ayes have it. Five zero. So, Bob, somebody will draft it on our letterhead and, and plan it. Okay. I'm Great. All set now. Dan, very comprehensive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Alvarado, your first report. <laughs> uh, I don't have any this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Don't feel compelled. <laughs> Um, Andy? Um, yeah, yes, uh, I have a couple. Um, let's see here. Okay, so two uh, committees met this week that I, or last week rather, that I was the liaison to, the Town Forest Committee and the Climate Advisory Committee. Uh, I went to both, didn't stay for all of the Climate Advisory Committee. But the Town Forest Committee, two things. Uh, we were in a conference call with their forester consultant, um, and uh, they discussed meeting with the consultant at the Town Forest to identify a pilot area for selective thinning. This is under their um, forest health improving the health of, of the, the town forest. Um, and they plan to invite stakeholders from other parts of town government. They also, <coughs> once again, dog et etiquette uh, rears its head, and they're exploring new ways of getting the word out, essentially, on dog etiquette. And, and, and I can go into those in, in more detail, but they're, mm, I won't. Yeah. So, um, CAC wanted me to let the board know that they had a, s a successful Earth Day Fair on April 21st. Um, they'd like to thank Mark Mahoney, the, cons the custodian at Parker Middle School. I think it's important to acknowledge him. And also the, st the town's staff in support in, in getting the word out. The next big event is um, Reading Cares Bicycle Recycling and Giveaway. Um, it will be held Friday and Saturday, May 4th to May, to May 5th at RMLD. And you know the whole concept there is you can offload a bike that you don't need anymore or pick one up um, for yourself. And then thirdly, um, and I think there's been some questions circulating around this, they are working on impl impl implementation of the checkout bag bylaw, uh, which is now in effect, uh, although there's a grace period for businesses until September 10th. Um, th they're taking the lead in communicating with town residents 
and encouraging everyone to bring your own bag. They had flyers at Earth Day, um, and they uh, and they were at Friends and Family Day, um, and, or they planned to focus on their message at Reading Friends and Family Day, uh, and they planned to attend additional uh, events. Um, the, it appears this town staff is taking on the lead to notify businesses in town, um, and uh, that um, they've met either the chair or the entire board, I, I don't know, has met twice with um, uh, town hall to plan the message and the implementation um, of the town, uh, of the bag ban. And their plan is for both the town and the Chamber of Con I get Apparently, the plan is for both the town and Chamber of Commerce to send letters to notify businesses on about May 11th. Um, and then I had uh, from the from the just a report um, perspective. We we have we get a lot of correspondence and you can't summarize it all. But I think uh, um, three. I wanted to call out three correspondence we received uh, in the past couple weeks. Um, a letter from a, a, a woman about an open drain pipe in stagnant yep. water, yep. And, and and Bob, that's probably your bailiwick. Just wanted to sh shout sure that I out. Like that. Um, I think yeah, it's in, in, yeah. not the stagnant part, but um, <laughs> uh, also I think it, it's in, important. We got a letter from uh, a couple um, regarding some very. Um, Rapid response by DPW to a flood in their their it sounds like a flood in their basement. DP, DPW acted very quickly, found the leak, shut it off, and so they wanted us to acknowledge them. And then lastly, uh, should we we got an email from a Wakefield resident asking us to make a pro proclamation for Children's Mental Health Week, and and that person suggested some language that we, we might want to do. I think the Children's Mental Health Week is next week. Yeah, we, we've done these retroactively, though. That, that wouldn't, okay. wouldn't hurt to do. do and I also would like to at least see if there's a, a Reading connection there. People, if there are people in I'm Reading sure there is. as well. So. Okay, um, anything else? That's it. Okay, Thanks. great. Thank you. Um, me, just a couple of really quick things. Um, last week I attended the um, uh, volunteer uh, volunteer award dinner uh, at the Senior Center where um, we feted the many, many, many number of volunteers who help with our seniors uh, in the community, whether that's helping prepare taxes or doing shopping or being a companion or working at the Senior Center, answering the phones. Um, it was a great event. Um, they got proclamations from the state uh, senators, uh, the state senator and the reps. Uh, we actually gave Volunteer of the Year awards um, to two residents, um, Priscilla Cacciatore and Lil Lillian Marino. Uh, Lillian wasn't there, but we now have it signed, um, and Priscilla, who was there, um, we signed these today. So when I went up there to actually present it, I I, want, I, I, I kind of took, <laughs> took it back and I said, Priscilla, you know, and she like grabbed it back, said, no, this is mine. And I said, well, don't you want it signed? So Priscilla, if you're watching tonight, this is signed. I will so, pass a formal yeah. motion also. And uh, do we want to just do that now? Uh, we, sure. Okay. We'll so segueing right into yeah. that, I guess. So, so I'd like to uh, make a motion that we uh, award these uh, certificates of recognition for Volunteer of the Year to Lillian Moreno and Priscilla Cacciatore. Uh, Lillian, uh, in recognition of her tireless efforts working with the town's Elder and Human Services Department to better the residents of Reading and the community as a whole, I guess the wording is the same for Priscilla. So that's the motion. Second. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor? Priscilla will be delivering your proclamation. Um, and then just a, yep. Oh, um, do you want to do this one now? Or should I just wait till I'm done? You just wait. All right, right. Okay. So, um, yeah, because so Bob wanted to do something. Gotcha. And then just really quickly, um, last Saturday night, I attended the Reading Education Foundation Imagination Celebration um, at the amazing space of Lee Kimball Designs, which is above um, uh, the North Mark Bank. Uh, tremendous space. Yeah. They they uh, they donated it. Probably well over a hundred people. As you know, REF 
uh, donates, I think it was this year they presented a check for well over $60,000 to the schools to provide technology grants uh, to all the different to different schools. Uh, it was a great time. And then um, I also wanted to let people know that um, they do sort of a, a, a silent auction and items are still open. There are hundreds of really great things, tickets, food gourmet items, um, vacations, memorabilia, health and fitness. So if you go to Reading, um, uh, readingef.org, you can still bid on this, I think, through May 7th. So a great cause, a great group of people uh, who volunteer. And then also just want to plug one more thing. This Sunday is the annual house tour. Um, the Friends of the Reading Library um, provide. So I always love these things, or my wife does, because she can get in and just get decorating ideas from all the neighbors who open their houses to everybody. But it's a great event. You get to walk around the neighborhood, um, and the proceeds go to the Friends of the Reading Library. So um, that's all I have. And um, moving on to, uh, I guess we'll go to public comment now. Mr. Brown. What do I call you now? <laughs> Just A-U. Right? Yeah. A-U. Yeah, I had that in chance. Yeah. Uh, yesterday I had the privilege and the honor of uh, going up with a veteran agent, uh, Kevin Bogmiller, to Mr. Five Year. After 73 years, he finally got his purple hat. And oh, well, unfortunately, yeah. he's on his way to uh, Sartell now. And the other thing, uh, we just voted tonight for a new uh, cemetery regulation, so we would hope that maybe the press would pick it up and get it out there because uh, effective of January, uh, July 1st, things are going to change drastically uh, for what been there before. Okay. And it's no vengeance or anything else. It's sheer, basically for safety, number one, and number two, uh, for the appearance of the cemeteries. Some of, some of the lots are getting, uh, I, I don't want to say the word, but mm. pretty crowded. Pretty crowded. So you vote on them, maybe to give them to town staff and they can figure out a way to get them dispersed? Yeah. Yeah, the right. more it gets out there, the better it is. Okay. We're also down two members of everybody looking for an exciting mm. job. The well, best, be the part of the mask, right? The best so. thing about the cemetery bill uh, thing is we have no complaints from my customers. No. Yeah. <laughs> That Thanks. you know of. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Any other public comment? Um, is this part of? Uh, it's on the yeah. agenda, so why don't we just take it take it up at that point? Um, all right. Seeing none. Um, Bob, do you want to give us your? I get to pass this around, and you promise to be very careful with it. I'll explain what it is. I don't know. It's not a chia pet. I'm not <laughs> Wait, I thought we can't do this in Reading. <laughs> Gotta hurry. Yeah. I'm gonna read to you uh, two different letters I got that will explain what you're looking at. Uh, the first is from Kathleen Gentile and Jemmy, grade one, and, the, and Bethany Nazaro, grade four, from Joshua Eaton School. In the spirit of peace and community, our first grade and fourth grade students chose to do a peace kindness project. They work collaboratively to color, put together, plant, and write. We hope you enjoy your gift if they enjoyed making it for you. Is that for us? No, it's for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a second letter. Dear Mr. Lurlacher, and it's spelled almost exactly right. Uh, it says, hello. We are from, I always love kids like that. We are from Joshua Eaton. We are sending you our peace project because you are always helping our community. We are fourth and first graders that thought you would love this project. You are amazing at your job, spreading love and peace to you. <laughs> Signed, Brent, uh, Braden, Tegan, Ariana, Julia, Farah, and Ellie. Wow. So I can tell you when I was in either first or fourth grade, I had no idea there was a town hall. <laughs> um, I think that was, fourth grade was, uh, Jim Lonborg and the 67 Red Sox, yeah. that's all I remember. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, we have, we don't always tell you, we have some of the school kids that visit this building and interact with our staff. And uh, that's really one of the best parts of our job, honestly, right. is, is seeing the uh, wonder of the kids' uh, eyes of what's what happens. And obviously, they're much more interested in the firefighters and the police officers. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, it's certainly much appreciated by folks in this building especially when kids take time out of their day and say thank you. So I just wanted to thank them. And I have this certificate of appreciation that you've all signed, which I would ask you to make a motion of. Oh, okay, sure. I'll leave that to make the motion. I didn't want to invite them because I didn't want to make a big production. We don't want to make um, them glassy. They gotta do. they got to do homework. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the certificate of appreciation to the Joshua Eaton Elementary first and fourth graders. 
to thank you for thinking of us while doing your peace and kindness project. We sincerely appreciate all the hard work you put into creating the wonderful peace plant we now have displayed in the office. That's the motion. Second. All right. Any uh, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. Well, this is great. The, the, uh, the trimming of this grass is quite a challenge. Right? <laughs> there you go. I want to take a, I want to take a picture do. of that before the end of the evening. So. No, that's fine. Very good. Scissors. Yeah. Way to go, Josh. We, yeah. That's thank great. You. And the only other comment I have is uh, is a thank you to town meeting. Um, okay. Bill, when uh, town meeting was at its height, what was the most meetings that would happen in the spring? Like 19 or something? 13. Oh, yeah. 13 that's nights. terrible. So. Yeah. It, it deal with a nice cake. <laughs> yeah. So I remember, and, and you've done that, Dan? Yeah. It was 13. Oh, I remember. That's what I did. They did a line item, my bloody line item, and it was the old government structure, no yeah. town manager, every right. department was fending for itself. Yeah, it I, I've heard some of the crazy. story from my predecessor, which he just heard from staff, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the town meeting has become remarkably efficient. Um, you know, to do the town meeting and really one and a half nights, the first night being a short night, is really good. Um, and yet there was a reasonable, reasonably healthy discussion on anything that was needing it. Um, they didn't speed through it. Uh, Wakefield, I think, had 19 articles. They thought they might finish last night. They finished two articles last night. So, um, you know, hats off to the Reading Town Meeting members who do their work in advance, have the discussion they need to have, and then they finish. Well, we did. We did spend a hundred million dollars in hundred twenty million per hour. It, that's, oh, that, that's the rate at which we spent a little longer on the shadows than we did the hundred million. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Just saying. For a hotel, it probably won't Sorry. come. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't say that. <laughs> Not on that side. That's all. Right. That's it. And just, just Bob, one, one quick question um, uh, uh, that's come up. Um, can you just give us a real quick update on how um, we're doing with filling the Andrew Corona position? Where we are with that? Or well, there were some interviews today that I haven't heard the result of. So, okay. so we're it's in progress. So we've got we've got resumes in. We've made interviews. You and, and I will be invited in the last round. Great. Okay. So that's good. One. That was that's a key piece. Okay. Thanks. That's it. Yep. Okay. You. Bob. I, oh. Um, Bob, when emails come through to the board as a whole, um, I remember a prior discussion that stated that, generally speaking, you address the issue. Um, but it's how do we know how it's been handled or if there's any follow-up required on our part? Um, there's not too many of these that come through, but it would be nice to be able to close the loop so that we, should someone ask, so that we have an answer. Um, we had put that on the table, I think, as part of your Article 1 selectman's policies, and it never really got fully addressed or changed. Mm -hmm. So it's somewhat still of an open question. Um, the general default is, and um, I had a discussion with Barry on this today, um, every email that goes to the select board, we've given two email addresses, um, will automatically from now on go in your packet. That has not always been the case. And so you're going to see some junk mail. You saw two today. Well, we don't want to make a judgment. We're just going to put things in your packet if it goes to that address, unless it's coarse. <laughs> um, what I always do is forward it to the relevant staff member, and then I get a follow-up. And I normally only discuss that with the chair and maybe the vice chair, depending on the issue. So that's part of your policy that you need to decide how you want that follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, for instance, you mentioned one tonight, and there was another one that was similar that might have come in today um, that was clearly DPW, and Jeff followed up with the residents mm -hmm. and, and the issues were closed. And it's important that you know that. It's a question of how you want to know that. Mm -hmm. So I can put in a future packet the follow-up if I have it in writing from a department, but sometimes I don't have it in writing. But I can ask for it. You know, can you please summarize what you did in the issue? Um, so it, it's really up to the board as to how you want to follow through. Mm -hmm. But there is, they're, they're getting addressed. It's just yes. Um, let's hope. <laughs> um, I always copy the chair um, with whatever I think the final answer is. Um, sometimes, you know, a year and a half ago, we got 250 on. Would you please fix the foreign language part of the budget? Right. Yeah. We're not going to answer every 250. So that's why I needed a little more guidance on your policy and, and was ready to discuss that and, and am at any time. Um, I think it's important that, I think Andy brought this up, um, that every email coming into you be seen by the public. I think that's a fair idea. Yep. And and then how you want to handle responses, I guess the steps open to. So. Thank you. Yep. 
Right, anything um, else? Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, I, I, I this. Uh, we need to figure out how to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll I'm sure we'll work on that policy okay. so you have clear, clearer guidance. Um, and, and along those lines, um, there was an email to us, all of us, that didn't seem to have made the packet, and it was, um, I, I don't want to say the rag man, but that's what they used to call him. Um, I don't remember this. You know, there was a proposal. Um, I'll email it to you, okay. um, and um, it's it's from, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name, but it came in on April 24th, and the idea is they'll do a curbside oh, yeah, um, yeah. textile or cycling yeah. pickup, um, and so some sometime the board should probably discuss that. I don't remember that, that one. I don't remember seeing that I never saw that one. It says, I, I'm sure they didn't send it just to you, too, maybe? I, I did too. Well, that's a, that's another point. I, I didn't see. I didn't receive oh, that. Well, if that's the case, yeah. then it shouldn't go in the back. No. Yeah. Right. Well, that's up to your policy, but um, you know, I will remind the board and, and the public, I guess. Yeah. If they communicate with the selectmen select board's single address, it's now going to Caitlin, myself, and, and you five. Right. And it will be in your right. packet. If they individually email you, I don't see those. Yeah. They may individually individually email all five of you, and you may not know that. And That's again, true. we it's don't see copy. those, so I don't know how you want to handle yeah, other emails. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll forward that's this to you. That's why you probably need to re-pick up Article One and talk yeah. about. Right. Yeah. Well, that's you know what we're gonna we'll get back to it, you know on our, yeah. on our on our policies and our uh, yeah goals. But this for next this year. is what I just sent to you, okay. and you can send out to the okay. rest of the board for us to consider. Consider, and the other one is an email um, going way back to January twenty third of this year. Um, I, I I've tr is from our. Um, Attorney, I, in this case Ivra Glass Freed, to the state, and um, you you all seemed to think it was in the packet, packet, and I went back and I looked several times and I, I couldn't find it. So, um, do you know what packets it, it's in? And if it's not, we should probably get well, into. That's it. one of the issues I was going to pick up after town meeting. Um, I think we've cured it going forward. Um, from now on, you're going to have one packet and only one packet. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and if something comes in, let's just say afternoon on Thursday, it's not going in your Tuesday packet. It's going in the next week. Right. So one of the challenges has been we've tried to respond right up to 10 of 7 right. yeah. with information in a packet that's physically handed to you, um, but the but public doesn't posted. see it. It's not posted. Right. It's not saved electronically. Oh, it isn't. I thought it was. Um, it's saved in document storage, mm -hmm. but it's right. not published in any any other way so a resident could see it. It's got to be electronic. So this way, yeah. there'll always be one real packet. It could be lagged because, right. as you know, an issue comes up over the weekend in social media and you get a lot of emails. Right. That's going to be in a future packet, but you'll at least have all seen it. And you can certainly have a discussion about it. And it's also just not fair to you, Caitlin, that you know to be looking at your email five minutes before a meeting to make sure we get something. So yeah, and, and we a found deadline, and only then one of our it. peers was doing what we were doing, and they were also thinking of changing. Everyone else does the cutoff well in advance. Yeah. So that there's never any question. This is the packet it's in. Yeah. So that's the challenge of that email and, and a couple others is which packet was it in? Uh, I, I I think that uh, this this wasn't a cutoff issue. This was an email I didn't see until right, the so state responded. Going so forward, all emails yeah. that we get are going right, to be Right, but I think we need to get this one into in the public view because I've asked about it a, a number of times. Well, it was definitely discussed at a meeting and, and physically here and shown there. It's probably in one of your paper packets. Yeah, yeah. so let's just, let's just get it in a packet. So Go. the packets that I hand you like tonight are not on your line because yeah. they come in after that I sent out everything up on Thursday. Right. right. Okay. Is this particular email relevant such that currently relevant such that the public would want access to it at this point? Um, it, it's just to, it's for transparency's sake. It had to do with the open meeting law violation. I wasn't aware of, it represented the Board of Selectmen, but I wasn't aware of it. I had some concerns that I expressed. Um, Bob and others were under the impression that it was in the packet. And I was thought I might have missed something. So going forward, we're going to have one packet. Anything that yeah. we get is going to be in there. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. So I'll just move this along. 
Um, all right, next item up is the Lincoln Prescott 40B update. We have Matt Zucker um, from the development team, and I'm, I'm sorry, I forget. Ken Chase. Ken, I'm sorry. Thank you. Here, uh, spe uh, specifically to address some of uh, sort of the update and so some of the soil stuff that's come on. So wh what, what I'd like to do, so just kind of how I want to run this piece of the meeting, um, Matt, if, if, and if you guys can just kind of give us a quick update. Um, what I want, by the end of this agenda item, what I what I would like to see is that everybody has a clear understanding of um, where we are right now with the issue of, of the soil, um, the process going forward, who has jurisdiction over what, who doesn't have jurisdiction, so that the public understands that if there's an issue, where it goes, what the timeline is, what the process is, what our responsibility of, uh, as a board is, what our responsibility of a town is, and what our responsibility isn't. So I'm hoping that we can kind of just get to that point and then also maybe just give us a regular quick update and, and, and hopefully address some of the communication issues that we talked about a website. So I'm just gonna yep. turn that over to you. Uh, and, you and, and, and Actually, before you start, I, due to conflict of interest law, I, I have to state um, that I work for the DEP. Um, I'm not working on any cases in Reading, nor including this case, um, and that it's okay for me to talk talk about it because we're unpaid. I thought that was a nice little uh, benefit not to not being paid. If I was paid, I, I would have to recuse myself. And and. Um, yeah, that's it. And I've also filed an appearance of conflict of interest okay. with the town clerk. So I just have to announce that at every meeting we discuss this. I'm sorry. And then, Gene, if also if you can be helpful to kind of fill in some gaps as we go along on this, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Member of the Select Board, um, Jim Johns. I'll give us a quick update yeah. first. When we were here last, we talked some communication things. We had a neighborhood meeting after that. Um, we had about 20 uh, or so people. I couldn't make it there for a conflict that day. But uh, there was a number of things discussed. Uh, the owner of the construction company, Ball Tail Builders, was there. Uh, he kind of ran the meeting. Um, there were a couple of action items from that, such as like put up a mirror so maybe people could see better there and put some screening on a part of the fence. It was hard to get on unless we did some more clearing, which we did, and put it up. Um, and since then, we've um, it's taken a little longer, but we do have a website out now. It's um, going to be construction of 35 Lincoln Street ST.com. Our contact will be there. We have like a general schedule there, and we'll you know obviously update as things go. And then Bald Hill Builders contact is there. So everyone already had our contact, but it's there again. Our phone numbers, our emails, a schedule, and uh, we'll try to get there. Like we're trying to work on a comment section. Do you want to? So do you want to give that? Uh, it's construction of 35 Lincoln ST.com. It should be up right now. Um, like perfect. Like one, one of the papers in your packet. Okay. Oh, okay. One, one of the, the 300 pages. That's I sent you a little bit. Yeah. Lincoln ST. ST. It was in the Oops. email uh, at the link in the lot yeah. of the <laughs> address. But it, it was in the oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Nothing like live TV and little kids. And making sure it's up, yeah. Oh. So well, we'll you yeah. know, do our best to update things and you know, it's probably uh if you scroll down right. so oh, yeah, contact. And that's a 24-hour number for Bald Hill Builders. Um, so if there's a problem at any hour, they have an emergency number, it would ring through whoever's on call with them. Um, and then okay. that's great. probably don't need all that information, but there it is. So hopefully. Well, the neighbors will start beating up your builder if they're behind yeah. schedule, right? Yeah, well, yeah. We, I think we would be more than happy if they did that. Um, so the site's demo's cleared right now, and we're um, in the permitting process of getting final building permits. Uh, pet peer reviewer doing all the building code stuff. I think we're literally a, you know one, a day or two away, hopefully, from getting the final. Okay, we went through one round of revisions, then the building could permit could issue ANRI and IFPs and, and all that good stuff. So um, we have a RAM plan filed um, on the site, which de details how you deal with uh, the site. So the soil has some contaminants in it where there was urban fill. It's not a you know there was no VOCs or hazardous oil. 
Um, as far as I know from our LSP who is with you today, that stuff is... Matt, can I just have, um, for, just, for, just for those of us, including myself, who um, aren't in the business, can you just... when uh, instead yes. of LSP stands for... Licensed Site Professional. And RAM is... A response to action. All right, just, just remedial... Remedial action plan. Right. Just because action. all of us don't Measure know the... Plan. You know, yeah. 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 And, and I would... I'm no expert, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. I have, luckily have a board member who knows this stuff probably okay. better than all of us combined. So um, Thank if you. I say something wrong, I'm sure... Oh, the, the purpose of the LSP is to actually control the site. And correct me if I'm mischaracterizing it, but... The, the purpose of that individual is to make sure that we follow what's in that ramp plan. So there's, um, as, as we do the excavation on the site, uh, my understanding from talking to the LSP and reading those reports is the materials that are there are not uh, dangerous in and of themselves and they can stay there. If we are to export them, they need to go to a site that uh, has the, uh, uh, the licensing and, and capability to accept it. So to the degree we're going to export that stuff, we have a site uh, that it actually in Nashua that we're going to bring that to. Uh, some of that will likely actually stay on site, and that will all be under the supervision of the licensed site professional. Okay. Uh, and you know, it's just, this is under state regulations. This is Mass DEP. Right. They're in control. They have jurisdiction over this. We're meeting with them to just go finalize the ramp plan on Thursday. Um, there was a letter to, um, there was an administrative issue on um, when you get these, there was a, you have a 120 day notice when you find out these things. And administratively, uh, we got this plan, we didn't see, you know, given the history of the site, we actually thought we'd find more stuff here. We did a full phase two and did a ton of testing. We know it was in our so, packet. No, no, so it was in the middle. <laughs> all where I have to spend my Thursday, so I, I, you know, I know. Yeah, so. Um, all 300 pages. And, you know, so, you know, so it, as I said, the, the reports have been up on the town website, so it wasn't like we were trying to hide anything there. So um, we're finalizing everything with the RAM plan. The state oversees it through our LSP, who's a, uh, you know, a licensed, you know, uh, certified under the state guidelines. So um, it really more becomes a matter of us complying and, and following the RAM plan that's approved by the state. And so you're meeting with them this Thursday. week? Thursday. Okay. Yeah. And is it possible for you to sort of update us or even update the website on, you know, or if... When you meet with them, are they going to bless it? Are they going to... Uh, yeah, so no, I mean, it's usually... Okay. Um, and we've given it to uh, the Board of Health, uh, the Health Department asked for it. Um, our Health Department. And, and okay. actually, we sent it to the town, too. So okay. even though you don't have to, our, uh, our environmental company does send them into okay. the town. Um, just as good practice. And we also sent it to the Health Department as part of the process. So okay. everyone has it. I don't expect it to change okay. anything, but we'll, you know, obviously on Thursday. And that's more the site work process on there that's, I know it says May 20, March 29th. We're a little pushed back because we were waiting okay. for every department to sign off before we even started digging on the site. So we've been trying to trying to do that, but it, that should take about you know four weeks of and, you know, digging, which is on there through the end of May, kind of. So we'll, this will be a constant update. May not be daily, but if something's ahead or behind, then we may, tweak this a little bit, but it, it's there and, um, and our contact is there, so hopefully. So if there's anything that the state finds that sort of, you know, they feel is of concern on the site, they're not going to allow the project to proceed unless you do the proper me mediation and you'll be in communication. And, yeah, okay. and, and, and you actually have your LSP on site while you're doing this. Okay. So you have to, there's a requirement of when you have to test. You have to actually close the site out. So part of that is, you know, the LSP certifying and you know testing you know different with modes when they go out and at different times and it's a whole process um, that you have to follow to actually be able to close the site up with DEP. So it's a pretty strict process. Um, I've done it plenty of times on much more uh, difficult sites than this, so uh, we'll make sure we follow uh, all the regulations. Any other qu any questions? I can just make a comment. Oh yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, in your packet tonight on pages 13 and 14 is a letter from the LSP, Bruce Hoskins. It which packet? The daily packet? Today. Yeah, today. Yeah, thank you. The going away daily packet. We figured a good sum summary. What oh, page, what uh, page was that? I'm sorry, John. 13, 14 of tonight's handout. Oh, okay. Handout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a chance to read this. So this presumably will be presented to DEP for their... Well, this was actually for the town's benefit. Okay. Uh, and we just got, we just, um, we were asked as part of the permitting process, can the town have something in the file? 
okay. more of a summary um, and kind of at least directed to the town of what the process is. So we had our LSP. Uh, Bob, did you or anybody from this make sure you know, understand? Yeah, thanks for sending it. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, any, any comments or questions to the board? No. Anything, anybody from the public? So, I, I, Barry, just a couple of uh, things to say regarding the process. Um, so, the LSP is paid by Ewell. Yes. Right. And um, the state relies on these LSPs to make sure everything is done in accordance with their regulations because we can't follow everything along. Then they get audited. Um, so you you said something maybe I misheard you, but, but that the um, heavy metals that were found on site are are safe or not a health threat or something. Like that? Uh, that I, um, they could be left in the soil. Like if we were, you know, we could leave them there in the soil. It's once we dig them out to move them, um, and when we dispose of them, they've got to. You can't just send it with every all the rest of the field. Yeah, I, I think that it's a little. A little different from that the the as you go through the phase process and this is not the phase one phase two ESAs that we looked at but the, uh, the DEP has a phase process to, to get to closure to close it to get a permanent solution at the site and and during that process it'll be determined if the site's been adequately characterized you've looked in all the places that there could be contamination and um, it, they'll, then your LSP will do uh, what's called a risk characterization and determine if it can be left in the soil or if, if it can be left um, or if it needs to be removed or, or there could be activity in use places, you know, all sorts of things. But, but it, now we don't know really the correct. full there extent is, of yeah, contamination. Yeah, right. I think the initial hypothesis we should have said is that right. the, the belief is that that will turn out that way. Yeah. The levels are low. Um, but we, but like it is a, it's, a, it's a long pro, it's a process, right? And yeah, it can be long or short, short depending details. on the, yeah. And at the end, yeah. you got to do additional testing, make sure you know you got the limits of the work. So I probably gloss more over from a yeah. layperson uh, standpoint, uh, but uh, uh, it's a very okay. detailed, yeah. uh, arduous, yeah, cost yeah. process. Right, right. And, and and if it's not a complicated site, it can be closed out within a year. Correct, and that's what the DEP is expecting us to have this closed oh, okay. out. Okay, and, and you said something about meeting with the MC, with the DEP? Correct. So I don't, I, all I saw was the letter of enforcement, and I can't really speak, uh, enforcement yeah. conference. Um, I can't really speak to what's that, I don't know what's that about, what that is about, sorry. Um, but that's not, um, that's, they don't approve documents there. Correct. They negotiate. Uh, there was a vi there's been some violation. I, I don't know what. And then they uh, negotiate a, a deal on on how to fix it, how to right. move forward, and all that. It was and it was, it was an administrative issue. We're not talking like other sites where I've seen somebody's done something. Don't, and don't tell me. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I know. Know. <laughs> well, I mean the letter said. I mean it yeah. clearly. Does, yeah. I think that if you read the letter, it yeah. tells yeah. you what. Yeah, that issue was so. Any questions from the public? Sorry, oh, sorry, Jean. Um, yeah, Jean Billy, assistant sorry. town manager. Um, I have been working closely with the Board of Health in following up uh, to make sure that the town is aware of what the uh, circumstances are. I've reached out and spoken to two people at DEP to confirm the understanding, and I know we don't want to get into it tonight, but I just want everyone to be aware that town staff takes this very seriously, even though they're not our regulations, they're the state regulations, and to the point that was made about the licensed site professional, that that is an environmental engineer who is highly expert in this field, and we fully respect that expertise. Um, and and I, I think the important point I'd like to make is that town staff is very proactive and we um, have reached out to the state and asked questions to try and clarify if there's anything else that the town should be doing. And um, the response I got from the DEP representative that I spoke with is that if the Board of Health has any comments, they can certainly provide them to the DEP. And we have made that crystal clear to the Board of Health. We had a meeting last week that I was in attendance at, and uh, we followed up with emails, 
and ask board members to individually provide us with comments if there are any concerns. And the chair of the Board of Health also called the DEP and has followed up to, to verify that we have the correct understanding. So the takeaway is is that we're on top of this. I and, believe we are. Okay. Thank you. Um, Cadence. Hi, Cadence Thomas, Arlington Street. Um, the enforcement conference letter uh, that we have access to um, says in it that there is an attached uh, uh, ACOP draft. I don't. I don't know exactly what that. I'm a dummy. Is. ACOP I, stands. I, I don't, oh. I, I Admi don't know administrative what that consent order with penalty. Okay. So the the enforcement conference is actually being held to to bring the uh, owner and developer back into compliance uh, because they have fallen out of compliance. It's a negotiation process okay. in which they're they're charged fee, etc. Um, I have spoken to the DEP and heard that that was about the administrative part, the one twenty day notice, and also because dirt was moved on the site prior to the ram being filed. So that is not just an administrative matter. Um, and um, I have several other sort of comments and um, um, understandings. Um, the I watched the Board of Health meeting and um, on April twenty fifth and twenty fourth. And uh, the town staff notified uh, the Board of Health that the licensed site professional is on site at all times uh, when dirt is being moved. And when I've spoken to the DEP, they in fact say that that's not their policy. Is there a policy or, or an aspect of our the town's agreement in which we are specifically asking the LSP to be on site whenever dirt is moved? I can respond to that. Um, the LSP's role here is to um, oversee this this site with regard to anything related to these soils issues. And I think the comment was made that the LSP is the point person on anything happening at this site that has anything to do with contaminated soils. You, you told, you instructed or informed the board of health that the LSP would always be on the site. And yeah. that just simply is No, the my policy. point was they will be on the site if they're touching those contaminated soils. That's That was my okay. point. I, that's not actually what the DEP requires. True. But that's what the developer has the said. The developer <coughs> has represented to us that the licensed site professional will be there if they're going anywhere near those areas that are under discussion. Okay, great. So Matt, is that, is that your understanding? We have a ram plan with the state. It's a very detailed process. So I'm not an LSP. You know, I'm, we're going to follow the process as we I need to follow. Mean, I, think. I think there are, there are two things to take away from this. That that person is, I think it's as Gene has clearly pointed out, that person's in charge. So if they say, move all that soil, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee, then the soil is going to get moved. If they say, don't touch anything, they're not, nobody's going to touch anything. Everyone, everyone on the site, we were there, we had a meeting today. It is crystal clear, the LSP was there, that nothing is getting done unless it's been pre-approved by that individual. So I think the key is that whether they're there or not there, any, any activity is under their control and they're going to make sure that we're compliant. They're in charge of the site from an environmental standpoint. Part of my concern is about how this information is being represented to the Board of Health. Though they are not necessarily overseeing this isn't perhaps within their purview, how that information is conveyed at a public meeting to the Board of Health is significant, and I think we should really be communicating to them clearly. Um, the town staff also at that meeting when um, when the chair of the Board of Health asked about dust on the site, um, the town employee responded saying that everything is taken care of, they are doing what they are supposed to. Now, the Board of Health didn't meet in March, and they sort of, their last meeting had been in February, and on March 26th, there was a work stop order on the site due to failure to comply with uh, the dust mitigation plan. And so, when the chairman of the Board of Health is asking how is the dust on the site, for the past two months, and um, the, the town employees are representing the, the, what has happened as everything is fine. I'm just a little bit confused about why there isn't a, a richer conversation being had there just to simply inform them so they are more aware of the conditions that have been on the site. Well, I'm going to take exception to your remarks. Um, town staff is always talking about present conditions unless they say otherwise. So when they say things are now under control, that's what that means. 
if the Board of Health wanted a historical two-month report, that's different. But at no time was that discussed. Something that happened six weeks ago that has been changed would have no bearing on a current discussion with the Board of Health. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 when Mr. Costigan said, how has the dust been, I assumed that that meant that he wanted to know how the dust has been on the site, not at the present moment. I, I think the Board of Health's concerns are current. Um, uh, let's see. There also was a bit of a conversation about um, how the DEP works, and that was communicated by staff. That I just, I'm, I'm not totally clear on on how um, that information was communicated. And I just I'm concerned that the Board of Health be adequately informed of their role and and what is going on on the site, so that they. There are other issues that um, I'm, I'm interested in um, following up on. I'm really glad that the website has been created because it's really wonderful. Um, like a, like a great start um, to sharing information. There was one community meet, um, meeting held and that was uh, driven by the developer and construction team. Um, and there was a, some talk about a bi-monthly meeting happening after that and I'm not sure if and when those next meetings would be or how they would be scheduled? I mean, I, I think um, as major milestones happen in the project or if it's going to be like, okay, now we're going to be, you know, digging the foundation, you know, if th communicating through the website um, is, is probably a good thing. Matt, do you have any thoughts on how you wanted to handle that? Everyone has our information. We ask if there is a question or a comment or concern. Please call us. We, 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 you know, we're here to answer them, and it's a two. You know, we, yeah, we hopefully could be good neighbors, and our goal is to treat everyone the right way. And we know it's a construction project in a residential neighborhood, and we're doing our best to make sure we do it right. And and we expect the same treatment in return because we are, you know, out there, and it's there's, it's a challenging thing. So we understand that. So if there is a question, please call. You know, contact us. You know, that's a private matter, and and if there's a need to have a meeting <coughs> above that we're you know we're happy there's a nice you know uh, uh, in town business right across the street that has great pastries so we're happy <laughs> to, to have a meeting and we have our trailer on site now which you know obviously it's, it's a dangerous site for people to be there but you know we're, we, we know it, we're very visible so and we're there every day so if not me I mean at least the construction manager so what we, what we tried to do is when there's a, a concern, we've tried to address it as quickly as we can. Just the, the examples Matt raised earlier, there was a concern about being able to turn into traffic with the, the spring we have up on the fence. The next day, a mirror was put up on the uh, pole across the street to try to mitigate that issue. Uh, we've just tried, you know, and we'll continue to try to address things as they come up. I think the, um, uh, when we get to major milestones where there's going to be what I would call out of, out of normal, there's always disturbance when there's a construction site in the area, but when there's going to be something out of normal that we think might interrupt traffic flow, things like that, we're going to make sure to communicate that as widely and broadly as we can to try to have as little impact as possible. Message or question? Well, I'd like to understand the process when a construction, not necessarily specifically to this one, but when an individual homeowner makes an addition on their home, there's a specific process that they need to follow. If they break from any of that, what are the what is the involvement of the town? Is there a specific process, or is it all case by case? Because my well, my experience, sure yeah, my experience <laughs> is that there's no one cookie cutter answer to very many questions. Well, where I'm going with this is there are clearly issues here, especially in regards to the soil, where we're talking about the DEP, okay. and that's clearly under the purview of, of the DEP, and that's fine. But what issues, because there's a history of issues with this um, regarding dust, the ground contamination, there were questions about asbestos, there were questions um, regarding uh, Pest control, um, paperwork, posting permits, and so I'm, I I want to understand what role the town has in addressing these issues because it seems that if the residents reach out directly to the developer, um, then it's frankly up to the developer on whether or not to address them. I think it's wonderful that some of those concerns have been addressed, but if there are others, where does the town play into this now? Jane Delios. Um, 
you're right. There have been a lot of um, complaints. The first one had to do with a complaint about a rodent problem that was all over social media, that there was a horrific rodent yep. problem. Um, the Board of Health Chair and the health agent personally inspected the site. There was no rodent problem. The um, pest management team that was out at the site was completely in compliance with what we require, which is regulated by the, again, by health, public health. That before any building permits are issued, there needs to be a rodent control plan in place and a professional company with a plan that's on file with the building inspector. So I could go on about the rodent complaint, but we could be here for a while. Right. No. So I'm speaking more generally because it, th these are just some of the things that, that I've heard from residents. And so I'd like to understand where the town plays in, where the Board of Health can be working um, both with the developer and with the DEP. Um, <coughs> Can you tell me a little bit about sure. that? So before any projects even come close to getting a building permit, we have a pre-construction meeting and we invite public safety help. Of course, the building inspector is there and a number of other staff or uh, town staff representatives. And we go through in painful and excruciating detail how this construction project is gonna move forward. Where are the a pickup trucks going to park? How is the trash going to be handled? That level of detail. So that we are crystal clear, we have phone numbers, we have everything we need to feel confident that if an issue arises, we know how to solve it. Um, that's before any permit gets issued. Um, the other thing that has to happen before we issue a building permit is we need the sign off. And um, they've been extremely patient in, in waiting for us to get all the answers on this peer review. This one in particular has gone through a excruciating amount of review from a professional outside peer consultant. Energy code, um, building code, the uh, architectural access code, and fire. fire. And probably been, I don't know how many, hundreds of pages of reports that have been generated as a result of those reviews. Building permit will not be issued until the code review consultant is satisfied that everything on the plans meet all of those codes. Staff continues to do code review in terms of electrical and in terms of um, uh, plumbing. That's an internal review that we conduct. Um, is that part of the peer review or no, separate? No, it's the staff level. The building inspector asks for all of the uh, relevant departments to sign off on the building permit before. So, for example, right now, the permit's being held up because health is, um, the chairman of the Board of Health has concerns about the environmental questions that have been raised. So it's holding up the building permit right now. Well, there's a couple other things going on too, but um, uh, the staff isn't going to sign off on something unless the chairman of the board of health is satisfied that all of these environmental, again, complaints, concerns, issues are properly being addressed. Um, so there's quite a lot that goes into it before the building permit is issued. There's the technical side of does this set of plans meet the codes? And then there's the collaboration and involvement of all the relevant departments signing off on it. We planning, for example, we do um, the 40 Bs, we do the decisions, the site plan reviews for the 40 Rs, and there's always a few conditions that have to be satisfied before planning will sign off on a building. And that's all spelled out in decisions. Can I take a part of the permit for this one? 
Okay. I'm sorry? There are 19 conditions on this one. 19 conditions. Thanks, Jane. So, so, yeah. so I, I, I just kind of want to move this along a little bit, but uh, what I want to do is I just want to, I mean, it's not our intention to have you come to every board of selectmen meeting, right? It's not, you know, it's 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 not our intention to do that. Um, you know, I, I'm encouraging you to stay in touch with the neighbors. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to put a shovel in the ground until all these guys sign off on it. But then it's going to be a construction project, like all the other construction projects are. Communicate. I mean, you have a website up there that's great. Um, you know, if there if there are issues, you know, it'll go to the it'll go to the town eventually. Hopefully not percolate back up to here but you know what I really want to do is just really just encourage you know the, the community be in touch with the developer if there's questions call um, if there's obviously issues about you know construction kinds of issues you know call the town um, I, 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 know, I know you want to continue yeah. to move on um, but I, I wanted to clear on one thing so in the event that a neighbor finds that there's certain um, phase of the project that's going on um, that they have concerns about. Sure, they can contact the developer for direct link to go on. I'm sure they'll address it. Um, but what actions does the town take if something is not being handled accordingly? That really depends on what the issue is and who has jurisdiction. So Let's it's say it's a, not the DEP. Okay, so that's if, it's, if it's a building inspected jurisdiction, we absolutely handle it. And if, and if they start at 6 o'clock when the order says 7, call then the police. The police will shut it down. Right. I have an example. Um, permits have not been posted on the site. And when my next door neighbor does demo on their property and the construction on their property, they post all their permits. Um, and I've seen lots of large construction sites with, you know, poster in the front. It's a company. It says contact information. And their permits are posted there. Is there a reason why um, this particular project is exempt from posting their demo permits at this point and now going forward uh, building permits. Well, if we had our building permit, we would post it up there. There's a, permit, there's a permit in the window of the, of the yeah. trailer. Outside. So on the demo, the permit's there. You know, when you're doing demo, obviously, it's, it's there. Yeah. So when the permit's yeah. issued, it will be posted. On, on, on the outside of the site so the public Well, see. the actual permit we're not going to post on a board uh, outside the fence. Because it would be destroyed by rain or wind or torn down. Well, you could put plexiglass or something over it. Uh, uh, you you could do a copy and then you can post it on the copy. Copy of okay. the, yeah. the, the actual permit in, the, in our trailer. trailer. Uh, uh, one, okay. one point. This is controlled construction too. When when do you get going on this? All we hire Cube Three, which is architect, is a very renowned firm. They have to inspect this. Their licenses are on the line. Their insurance is on the line. The building department relies on them. Everyone stamped it. So it's it's on us, too. So it's a whole process with the building department. There's plenty of avenues under that. There's under plenty of avenues if we don't do something. You know, there, we didn't have maybe dust there for a short amount of time, uh, dust control. We got shut down. The last thing we want to do is get shut down. It costs us a lot of money. Waiting for permits costs us a lot of money. So. We are, you know, we own that property. We are trying to do things as right as possible. I'm confident that you're going to be a and good neighbor. And we are happy yeah. when, if neighbors have a question or concern, to, to come to us because sometimes it's not even a rise to the level of an issue that would be a code issue or a town issue. It's, hey, can you it's make sure neighbor. this? I didn't see this. You know, it, it certainly go to the town, but we're there. I mean, we own, you know, we're not you know, shying away from that responsibility. And we hope people take advantage of that. That's why we give our, you know, personal... I bless, bless. I can just ask you to post all your permits on the website. That That'd be the easiest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah, we could Great. probably... Very... Picture I have to say, I'll be quick. Yeah. Okay. okay, last one, really. But, um, uh, were you shut down a couple times, one for dust control and one for closing uh, a, a lane? Uh, I'm, I'm I that. No. It, it, the issue was the dust. Uh, there was uh, uh, complaints. Mm -hmm. and the building inspector went down, mm -hmm. and uh, they, the decision, the, the, the crux of the issue was the dust. Okay. So and the only thing they haven't met with the town was that one dust experience. It was a windy day, was, and I think right, right, right. Shutting yeah. down anyway. That's what I'm. Tr I'm yeah. just trying to get at. It. It's yeah. just okay. it's, it's it's one thing. And then um, with regard to the site, and I and I want to say this. Uh, before you you build because what we don't want to have happen is 
that I, I read the phase one and phase two environmental site assessments. There was a lot of industrial activity that could have produced um, any number of releases to the site. Um, there's also a garage drain that had uh, apparently elevated levels of, of heavy metals in it. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, sometimes the drains end up going into the soil or the groundwater. Um, we want to make sure that uh, you don't build over something before you adequately characterize the site. <clears throat> that has happened, and it's awfully hard to dig up a building um, and, and assess for those problems. And what happens is the next owner gets stuck with holding the bag. DEP will review it. It can't review it immediately. Um, so I, I just would rather not have that happen here. We'd be proactive and do a good set characterization. Um, Thank you. Before. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. This is an ongoing thing. It's one of many projects. Um, you know, our intention is to have all of our new neighbors be good neighbors, and likewise us to be good neighbors. So, I just want to encourage the communication to keep to keep happening, and, and wish you a lot of luck. Thank Thanks. You very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, does anybody? Um, all right. Take two minutes. Uh, yes. Do we need to take? All right. Can we take a two-minute recess? Thanks.
2022. So next item up is um, we have a joint meeting with the um, Reading Housing Authority. I'm assuming you guys call yourselves to order or, or will do so or? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and so the issue here at hand, and also by the way, I just want to say we're joined by Liz Rust, who's our, uh, the town's consultant on, um, I don't know, Liz, what's your title? Affordable Housing Preservation? Uh, Affordable Housing Specialist. Consultant and Specialist, okay, great. Um, and so th there's, there's a couple issues at hand here. Um, a couple of weeks ago at our last meeting, Tim Kelly joined us and talked about specifically about that there's one unit over at Gazebo Circle um, that is, um, I think, being disposed of and um, while it had a deed restriction, there's some issues in terms of sort of creating or preserving affordability there, but then also broadly, there are 13 units that are owned over at Gazebo Circle, I counted, um, as well as a few others in various other locations, Sanborn, Pier Street, Maine and Summer, um, which may or may not have been ever counted as on our, um, on our um, housing index, but also that um, have also various forms of um, you know, affordability things that are either expiring. So, um, I guess I, I, I'd want to maybe someone from the Housing Authority just kind of talk about what you're looking from us for and then maybe get into a broader discussion about, um, you know, why aren't these counted on our inventory? What can we do to get them on our inventory? What are our resources available? What kind of things can we do um, so that, you know, we don't lose affordable units when we're working so hard to create? So, um, Jean, is that a is that a good way to proceed? Or yeah, do you I, want I think to say a few things. About I do. It? Thank you. Um, I want to first of all thank the Housing Authority Board for um, for their willingness to work with the town and with um, the staff, Julie Johnston. Um, we reached out uh, several months ago to um, see how we could work together, and I really appreciate the efforts that have been made because um, affordable housing. Um, is a very complex topic with so many moving parts to it. And um, the the spreadsheet that we provided for you, we put it in the packet, but we also gave you a large one because yeah, it's so you. complicated <laughs> that to have that buried in a 300-page packet was a little cruel. So we, yeah. we blew it up for you. I don't know if that makes it any better. It but, does, actually. Um, Thank you. But as you can see from the spreadsheet, um, there are several units, some are um, at risk of um, being lost, some never were put on the uh, subsidized housing inventory, so not to sp speak in jargon, but um, we are always talking about this inventory, the subsidized housing inventory that is maintained by the state, again the state. Um, the state has very specific requirements that must be met before a unit can be added to the subsidized housing inventory. Very specific. And Liz can talk <coughs> a lot more eloquently about the ins and outs of that. But basically, you have to have certain documents in place, regulatory agreements for the most part, mm -hmm. before the state will say, okay, you can now be, and, and it, they control the inventory, we don't add it. We ask them to add, and they often will say, well, we're not sure, or it doesn't meet this criteria, or whatever. So it's the state's call on whether or not things can be included in the subsidized housing inventory. We, that is not our call. So these units, a lot of them are older units, a lot of the regulatory agreements are older, and it's not uncommon when you start digging into this, and uh, Laurie Stanton is here as our housing coordinator. She's a full-time employee that we share with the three other communities. Um, we have the Regional Housing Services Office here in Reading, and we work um, with Laurie's help to really stay on top of where are we with these units, and um, how can we keep units, and how can we um, work together to make sure we're not losing units from the inventory. So I want that to be really clear. The detail of how you get there is a lot trickier, but I think with, with people in this room who are motivated to work together, I think that's a really excellent start, and I'm really proud of the hard work that staff and, and our consultant has done to get us in that, in that position. Whether or not we can accomplish what we hope to accomplish, I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows at this point, but 
the willingness to work together is, I think, a key ingredient to success. Okay. So um, there's the issue of um, one unit at Gazebo Circle. So Correct. Can, can someone speak to that? It's unit 1004. Um, it's coming up for sale. It's a homeowner's, home ownership. And, um, but that's not on our list. It's ne it was never on the subsidized housing inventory. So, it, so is it not a subsidized housing unit? Well, again, it's what the state calls subsidized housing inventory. But so it's not ours. It's owned by the housing authority. But it's not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, John, I'm a little confused. I know. I I'm, know. Just, I'm just going to caution you that we've had this discussion all the time, and it is an Abbott and Costello routine. <laughs> it's it's impossible. It's like a game of Jenga. You pull out a stick, everything looks fine, and all of a sudden, all hell breaks. So even though that there there was a so recorded deed, writer, there are several it. parties that have several views of what you'd think would be the same facts. Mm -hmm. That's that's yep. the thing you have to keep in the back of your mind. Well, that part's not shocking. That's yeah. the first part that's not yeah. shocking. Um, that people would have a difference of opinion. But, yeah. you know, I would think that it would be easier to narrow those opinions word on a list. But this one isn't. No. No, because okay. the list is someone's set of opinions, quite honestly. It's what the, one part of the state has said. So even though this unit was sold originally back in the day, 1997, I think it was, for probably a subsidized price, I assume, you know, because that was, uh, because there was a rider, it was yep. a, d a deed rider. Um, and I, I, you know, I read through it quickly. I didn't have time to read it through today. It didn't seem like it's expiring, um, unless I'm wrong. Doesn't that require then that the person who sells this unit is, is sort of obligated to, to go through the deed rider and then basically sell it at the same subsidy, you know, percentage subsidy as what they bought it? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. We'll bring the consultant Maybe the okay. housing authority went down first. I guess we, so this is a, it's, an, it's a so-called affordable, it says affordable on the deed rider, but that doesn't mean that DACD, that the state, agrees that it's affordable for the SHI. Um, it's a home ownership. A lot of initials, Tim. Okay. <laughs> right, it looks like we <laughs> just said, it's in this. we got the whole, we got the whole subsidized, subsidized housing in the going on here. The state's in Everybody's in required not to speak in so, the initials. So, TLA. What you're talking about, the, the, you want to get to 10%, the 10% of that inventory, SHI, uh, subsidized housing inventory. That's what you want to get to. Um, these, there were, I, I don't remember how many of it originally, there were the home ownership, so-called affordable, but they were never considered affordable even when the, when the program started. Um, and I think, I, I'm not sure why, uh, you know, predated, I've been on the Housing Authority a long time, but it, it predated me on it, the, the program that started before I was on it. Um, so we have those units and the affordability, the so-called affordability, uh, has a discount uh, price, which is 80% of market. That's where it becomes unaffordable for somebody Click the who button. is, Download is and get whose income makes them an affordable purchaser. That is the problem that we have on the resale because the deed rider, um, I mean, that's, that's the problem we have to keep it in this program. It already is not on the inventory for the state for the, to try to get to the 10%. Um, what we were, you know, we can talk about the other issues on the spreadsheet, but what we were asking, what I came before you before, was to, um, when we met with um, Liz and Larry uh, <coughs> in our meeting a little while ago, um, it was identified as the price, the sale price that it would be at. Um, to make it affordable would be about two hundred five thousand. But can I can I just just a question on that? Um, just also full disclosure, I used to write these things for the city of Boston, so I, I am somewhat of a I'm not going to say a subject matter expert, but I may have been an expert long call. I might have forgot more than I ever learned. But um, it seems to me so in here. Um, they had an appraised value, I think, anywhere from 350 to the, 330 to 370. So, it, 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 let's assume you do it in the middle. 
and the, the 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 value of this property is three hundred fifty thousand, and if they have to sell it at a twenty percent discount, that makes it around two eighty. Are what you're saying is that 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 a, a, a house that costs two hundred eighty thousand would be considered out of the reach of the affordability guidelines? Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of mm -hmm. principal, interest, taxes, insurance, at thirty three percent of someone's income. I did it real quick while I was driving. I probably shouldn't have. Um, and that's around seventy thousand. Is that so? Is is that seventy thousand dollar income above? Yes. What it would that doesn't qualify as an affordable. Um, yeah, affordable uh, household. Mm -hmm. At eighty percent of median income, it doesn't. No. Seventy. Two yeah, I have it right here. Probably. It's a it's a gross income of seventy three thousand would be the gross income that would be priced for this. Right. At at, at assume two eighty. At or below. Right. At the, right. uh, that's the, uh, yeah, the yeah. income limit that would be the maximum gross income for a household of three no. used to calculate the two hundred and four thousand. Right. So that that calculation took into consideration the principal, interest, taxes. I think there's a kind of fee here. Yes. Um, and okay. insurance. So when you put all that calculation together, it comes out to two hundred five as a affordable housing cost. But if this and then using the appraisal with the discount rate, it was 268. So I think what Tim was mentioning is if they sold it per the deed rider at 268, it would not be able to convert onto the state's inventory should the town decide to go to that route. But we're not counting it now, so it's not like we're going to lose something we already have. No, it was an opportunity to get to, something that we don't to set a precedent to you, you know go forward in this spreadsheet to see how to get these units on the inventory. And here's one that came up for sale now, so it was I think in so, partnership to see what would it take to put it on the inventory. So another qu another question I have. So so this deed writer is still in effect, right? So is this person? I'm not going to say her name here. Is she required to, to sell it at the two, whatever the 268, 270 to who, to whomever buys it? Is her equity is limited? I think there's some question about that. Um, so there's there's some there's some vague language in the deed rider that um, um, indicates that that they. I don't know how to say this. Um, so there's the 268 or a price that is affordable. I think it says if, if no one can be found at the 268 that you'd sell it for less. Hmm. Now, so we would cause, so under those circumstances, we would take a piece of property that is not on our list mm -hmm. and make the owner sell it for less than it's worth. I'm having a problem. Often with what this towns do is find funds to make up the difference. So been, she gets the 268 long time, but. and someone buys it at the 205 and mm -hmm. that there's funds. To so there's a delta gap. between those two. The thing is, to, John, to, to your question though, is that she bought she she bought it at a subsidized price. I get that, but mm -hmm. you know, so inflation being what it, was it is, a public property value is doing what they are. I get that. So it almost makes me wonder if there wouldn't be a way to sit down and just sit around the table with the owner and say, can we figure out something that makes sense? I don't see us in a position to go out and spend $268,000 to put it on our list. Plus, it's not affordable once that happens anyway. Yeah. Because the number is dollars to put it on the list. Say that again? 60000 It's the difference between yeah. the 268 right. and the 205. Yeah, right. OK, but it's, it still causes me some yeah. concern when you know we're talking about a piece of property that's not on our list and then trying to apply through vague language mm. um, the implication that suddenly this is now worth a hundred thousand dollars less than it's really worth because if this is you know got a market value in the 350 yeah. range which is what I heard a little while ago I, and we're I mean it strikes me that the right thing to do is to sit down with the owner and see if we can come to some reasonable way to solve this problem and maybe in in this situation uh, potentially add to our funds for future use maybe not around this one this one's going to be problematic no matter what we do how There's many other coming down the pipe. I was gonna say, how many other properties are facing a similar issue 
because it's sixty thousand dollars for this particular property. We're essentially buying it, buying the sixty thousand dollars to get it on the list. We're buying it down. I right. think is what's happening. Right. Yeah. So we're paying sixty thousand dollars to have one unit added to our list. How many more do we have? Because this could spiral. We think there are about six more that are kind of in the same situation. Sort of gray zone. Yeah. And what triggers so it is when that person decides to sell. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are those so on this know. list, Julie? Yeah. Those are. are on the list. Yes. We talked this about. one isn't. No, it is. No, this is our list, not the no. state list. Right. The, oh, list, of impact, our, the yeah. list of impact. The list of potentially this impacted. This is not units. the subsidized housing yeah. inventory. Oh, okay. This is all Just of our three. research. <laughs> In a spreadsheet. This is Laurie's job on one sheet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I okay. I get it. Um, so, Tim, if I could ask you a question to sort of try to wrap my arms around this situation. It, it, that currently, because of the deed rider, um, the property can be sold for up to $268,000. Is that correct? Well, there's, there's, there's a... There's Yes. Without any involvement from the town. There's a, more, there's a few more other options than that. Um, it could be sold at the, at the discount price, which would say is whatever. We haven't settled on that yet, actually. Yeah. But, Let's not uh, go there for now. Just. Uh, it can be sold to, sold to an affordable person, a qualified affordable purchaser for mm -hmm. that price. Mm -hmm. Uh, the housing authority has the option to purchase it at that price. 268. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, what is yes. the price? So the attorney's here, so he's, yes. he's saying no every time. <laughs> okay. But, uh, uh, or it could be sold at full market value, uh -huh. and then the difference to the to the mark to the discount price would have to come to the housing authority. Oh, I see. So um, if, if this fit, if you can't work something out to purchase right. it, and so what our suggestion was that we would take. The 205, we would purchase it, you know, put in the 205. The Affordable Housing Trust Fund would add in the additional to get it to the price that we agreed upon with, yep. the, with the seller. And then we would sell it to an affordable buyer with a new rider that would put it on um, a, a DHCD rider. That, that, that's okay. the Department of uh, okay. Housing yeah. Development, which is the state uh, uh, regulating agency. That would would put it into the state their lip program and come and put it on your inventory list. So that would add one for right. if if we can agree to that. If we can't, then I think what we're going to end up doing is saying to the seller, uh, we can't work something out, and you go sell it for the full market price, and um, and then we'll get the. Um, you know, the, the, difference. the difference will go into yeah. your fund. So, so, the, 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 authority, so, it so the difference, the, and it doesn't go to the affordable housing trust. Fund. Wait, where would, the, where would it go? I'm sorry, where, where would where would the difference go? It would go to the housing authority on the deed rider. The difference, and and they would do what with it? Uh, we would use it for affordable housing. Okay. It would go to you can know, donate. You go could into a reserve. You could donate to the trust fund, <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, it has to go to. Um, I mean, I suppose that's a possibility, but that's not. I, I, I think we would have. To. So on this one, if I can, so we, excusing all the numbers that we've been throwing around, we can decide to take sixty thousand of the two seventy that we have. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Something Is that how much we have? I think have. that's what we have. Yeah. So we can we can pay, take sixty thousand of the two seventy, right, <clears throat> and create one affordable unit to the inventory that we don't have, or. Then we could let it go, let the let, let it sell for market value. The, the 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 owner basically is capped on her equity. That call it seventy thousand comes back to the town, which can then go into the affordable housing trust fund to be used for something later. And then we don't we we're not losing anything because we never had it. Well, right. that's, that's the way I see right? it. Isn't don't, it I, am I not seeing that we have it? Would it. Go in, I think it would go into the resident, resident um, ah, Re Reading Housing Authority Fund. It would, go to, it would well, just go to us. Okay, right. but then you've got 12 more that are probably laboring under the same problem, right, that, as I see. So, seven of them. So, no, so this would be the gazebo, but only the ones that are, have private owner here. Oh, okay, all right. So some there's, of them are being rented so now. So it's seven. really as they come up for resale, you have an opportunity. Right. So whatever we do becomes a precedent if, if, yes. on the other six. 
So let me just ask a question about this, and let me just follow the bouncing ball for a minute. So in the, the latter explanation you had, Tim, this, this equity delta, it actually doesn't disappear. It, the property, A, an, an opportunity would be for the property to be sold at full market. Okay, so now it's sold. Pick the number, 350, whatever it is, it's a number that is higher than 270, but certainly substantially higher than 205. It strikes me that, you know, that actually, the common sense side of me says you should optimize the asset, first of all, and then work backwards into the into the document and the spirit of the document, even though this really isn't on our list, but it could be argued it could be or should be or isn't, but you know, let's say for a minute that what could end up happening is rather than us spending another sixty thousand from the trust fund, this sixty, seventy thousand could come back in. So the swing is a hundred and twenty thousand, you know, into the Granting Housing Authority or into the trust fund. One of either money stays in the trust fund to the tune of sixty or seventy thousand, and another sixty or seventy thousand potentially comes to the Reading Housing Authority. Theoretically speaking, so you it's all it's it's like the same pair of pants, just different pockets. You're using it for the same thing. Never had Am I right about that? Uh, that's no. what I'm <laughs> Oh, well, let, do you tell. Uh, so we, even though we are called the Reading Housing Authority, we're not an agency of the town. Right, you're state. We are a state agency, uh, and all our funding comes from either state or federal programs, mm -hmm. or from the rent that we uh, that we collect from uh, yeah. from tenants from the properties that we own, that we or from our trust funds. No, we've never the received anything from trust funds. I'm tree. just trying to understand. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to follow the trust fund, which is been existing trail. for a while. I'm only. I don't think there's been one time that we've ever. Yeah, we use it for um, Oak Creek, anything. Thirty Haven. They, they so there's been a lot of money that's sat there for a while, and, and we haven't. You know, the problem is, it's not a lot of money, yeah. and well, we haven't had a way of. It's there. there. And the other problem is, is that we haven't figured out a way to make the money grow yet. So that's that's a that's a longer term issue that hopefully we can all work together to solve. So, you know, if we were to as John had said, sell at market. There is a certain portion that comes back, but what are the implications there as far as setting aside the actual 10% list, the SHI? Um, what are the implications for that house because it is no longer affordable? The whole point of, of having these affordable units is so that um, people of more modest means can live in our community. So we, are we essentially removing one home and making it unaffordable. Yes. 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 But isn't it one that's not on our list? We're not getting credit for but, it. Now. But it's that's 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 true, but I that's can't not lose sight of that though. I mean there's a lot of affordable housing in town that doesn't technically qualify right. on our list. It's private owners who rent it at a lower below market. Yeah, there's lots yeah. of that. don't have deed restriction. Right, or the deed right. restriction, or the deed rider. It's Trailer old, it doesn't have the exact language right. DHCV wants. Right. So for some, you know. So there's flawed documents. Right. Yes. There's um, many different reasons that there are units that exist that aren't on our okay. list. But, but the purpose, though, of these is to make, it, uh, make units available to those of modest means. Yes. And so just because the town doesn't benefit and get added to the 10% doesn't mean it's not something we should still have available okay. in our town. Yeah, but I, it's, I but it's going to cost you 60 right. grand to make that happen. Right. One of the we, things that I think we have to it's realize already happening. is, is we just as, get these it to the pricing, cost of 60 grand. as the pricing of these units does what it does, this is what, the, this is what I'm, I'm listening to this, and what it's telling me is that we probably have units that are affordable either on the list or not on the list. However, we won't even get into that at the moment because that's probably almost a, a litigation kind of discussion, which scares me. Because um, I, you know, the, no, nobody wins there. Well, somebody wins, but um, I, some of these properties grow in value more exponentially and they can ever be retained for the purposes you're talking about. Vanessa, I agree with you that we need to have a certain amount of housing that's available to people to live here who don't necessarily meet the median income in Reading. I mean, I, 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 I'm fine with that. But I think that there, it sounds like there's properties and it sounds like there's more than one 
we're talking about one now, the acceleration of its value almost makes it, you know, a non-starter to retain it. You almost got to let it go and reinvest into something else. It seems, I, you know, at least that's what I'm, what I'm hearing. That's the conclusion I'm coming to at the moment. I hear it slightly differently. I think we have an option here. A decision. The only decision point for the board right now. Everything is up. Everything else belongs to the Reading Housing Authority. We have an option of investing sixty thousand dollars of our trust fund to get one to to get a house that will go on our list and stay affor affordable. And do we think that's worth it? Do, is that how we want to spend our trust money? Uh, to get another one added to the list and keep it affordable. I should I have a question? Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Gazebo Circle, that's the Bear Hill development, the new, the newer frame building up, we have buildings on Bear Hill, am I correct? Have I got um, the right place? It's got the big water tower yeah. at the top. Yeah. So that was a multi Forgetting how many units went up there, over 150? I think so. And this is permitted as a 40B originally or not? Um, I think it's maybe predated 40B. It probably did. Uh, yeah, I don't think it was 40B. A 40B. It's, not, it's no. not a 40B. No. So we don't get a 10. It's town owned land. Right. If it was. If it was 40B, they would be counted on your inventory. All right. Yeah, All right. Oh, okay, okay, okay so my argument's not going to apply. We don't get, if we get one back, we don't get 10 in the count. No. So that doesn't right. happen. Okay. It almost strikes me that, Andy, what you brought up is you spend 60 and retain it, and then there's an evaporation of the actual, the real equity of the property, or do you instead let it go in scenario two that you mentioned, Tim, and instead of depleting the funds by 60, you, you know, you have money that comes back in to the tune of let's say 60, that's, we're using that number. I don't, who knows what the real number is? So you gotta find out what the market is and all that kind of stuff. So to me, I mean, that's a substantial swing um, that may be able to be better utilized than trying to put a square peg in a round hole. You've got a property worth $350,000, you're trying to make it worth 205 to make it fit. That's so not what we're trying to do. I think well, we're we're trying to exactly we're trying no. Um, I, I I think we can either have it sold and be lost, and and the Reading Housing Authority will get some money, um, or this board can decide to invest. Well, first of all, it's not this dollars. board; it's both of the boards. Both of the boards. I apologize. Just want to be really clear on that. Right. So they would you would have to accept the trust fund money and buy the house, correct? No, it's a vote of both boards in joint session. Oh, for spending, okay, for spending right, right, any right. Uh, any trust funds. So, so, so I, I I understand your argument, John. Um, I think the the this house is about to be sold. We have a decision decision to make. Do we want to keep it in our? Do we want to actually add it to our affordable housing? Um, by investing, using $60,000 from the trust fund. And we haven't, how much, seems like we haven't really used the trust fund for it. How much is in the trust fund? 270 odd thousand. So, 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 so uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, because I called DHCD regarding this property and I spoke with uh, Raiko Heishi and I asked her about the language. They deal with these old deed riders every day. Right, that was, yeah. And they want to keep places affordable. And she said, oh, this deed rider has the correct language in it, that it can be interpreted to say that it, it can't be affordable anymore at the... Uh, at the formula? Yes, okay. at the formula. The formula was okay at, at its time, right. mm -hmm. but it doesn't work now. When you bought something for 104, mm -hmm. If it was, you know, appreciated 10 to 20 percent, mm -hmm. so maybe now you're selling it for, you know, 120. And DHC every day uh, manipulates those formulas to make sure the units stay affordable mm -hmm. and can be bought by somebody in 80 percent of the AMI. They so do it every day. I have a question. If you you have a you have an owner <coughs> who's going to become a seller. Um, you spoke with someone that said, oh, we deal with this all the time. Don't worry about it. It's not really a flawed document. It's just disguising itself as one. Are we open to litigation? Because that's a, 
issue here. You have an owner, um, you have a document that is at least in question, shall we say. Maybe due to its age, maybe due to its ambiguity. I, I'm not sure. It still says it has to sell it at, 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 at a 20% discount. I mean, that's in here. So okay. I think, but the, but I think the difference is, um, so what Lori's talking about is um, the particular deed writer where it might have some similar language, this is a local deed writer. It's a deed writer from the Reading Affordable Housing Program. Program, right? The DHCD deed writers, which might have the exact same language, say Department of Housing and Community Development at the top, and so that they have litigated some of the vague language and they've tightened up their language over time. As a result and they're of comfortable with uh, standing by their language. But they won't advise that Reading Housing Authority similarly. Mm -hmm. And they say, you have to feel comfortable standing <coughs> up to that language. Yeah. And uh, it is older language. And so that's that's part of Do the issue. That this it is, is a local litigation. Hmm? Is it subject to potential litigation? I mean, I guess anybody can sue I, anybody. Yeah. And most things are. T uh, David, did you, uh, did you, did you want to weigh in on that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. David Trudeau, I'm here in my professional capacity tonight. I, I represent the dear older woman that owns this unit that we're discussing, uh, who's trying to sell this unit. Um, and if I could add a little bit of clarity and or perspective from, from the homeowner, uh, she wants to sell her house and move out to California because her family needs it. Um, she recognizes that she received a benefit when she bought the unit. We are not, she is not interested in making this into a more complicated situation. But I do have to add a couple of perhaps points of clarification if I might. Uh, the appraised value of the property is much higher than has been discussed here tonight. It's been appraised by a professional appraiser, independent appraiser. Uh, that said, uh, and while reasonable minds can differ, um, the deed writer language, I think at best, is vague. Uh, vague is where I live. <laughs> uh, as part of my profession. And as such, uh, again, she realizes that there, sh she wants to repay the benefit that she received. She's not against that she's not trying to, to escape from that. She realized she bought this unit uh, at 80% of its value, um, but uh, she also wants to make sure that as part of the overall global discussion that the town and the housing authority, you know, and Tim and I and the housing authority, we've, we've spoken about this uh, briefly uh, as part of this overall discussion. Uh, we just want to come to a fair conclusion that benefits everybody. Um, that doesn't, as I sit here today, you know, the word litigation gets thrown about, um, and and again. So so you so she's on her own procured an appraisal. She has. Okay. It's required, I think, by the deed. Well, it's, if, if, if if we're going in conjunction with the deed writer, which again is vague, and I'll just use that word. Maybe it's been used already. Ambiguous subject to challenge, perhaps enforceable, perhaps not. It depends on, depends on who you ask, I guess. Uh, that uh, I recommended to her that she go out and get an appraisal because we need to start this process uh, and see where it leads. And also it gives us a good barometer of what we're talking about uh, in terms of what the actual market value is and it's, and it's greater than the number that's been, been shared with the board. Now. So, uh, you know, my client will, you know, realize that if she's allowed to sell it at market value, she's ready to pay a, a broker's commission to sell it, uh, and she's ready to have a discussion with the housing authority about uh, returning the benefit that she received back to the back to the town. So we're not, you know, but but I'm hopeful, uh, as I always am, uh, and, and working with town government that we can come to a, a reasonable conclusion. Uh, so she can get on with her uh, plans to be with her family. And uh, I hope that uh, the board and the housing authority will take that into consideration. Well, there's only one way to determine fair market value is you put it on the market. So, yeah. you know, um, it's not even fair. It's whatever one person will bring. Right. Uh, I just have a question for anyone in the room. I really don't know who to ask. Um, I'd say, generally speaking, house prices in Reading have appreciated faster than any income measure. 
Yes. So 80% of median income affordability is lagging the home price value. So isn't this a really big problem with yes. units that go up for sale? And what is the, excuse, the global solution at the state level if there is one? In 2006, they changed the methodology and they no longer use a discount from the market rate in terms of calculating the resale value. They use a methodology whereby they establish a multiplier at the time of purchase, right, right, which right. tracks to the income limits. So the appreciation that you realize is tracked to the income limits, not the market value. Okay. So all units purchased after 2006 have this new uh, methodology. Okay. So it's really the older units, and as they come up for resale, and so this kind of conversation yeah, that happens. That falls into the new. In every so community, presumably any new units. ones they do will have this a pre in two thousand. Right, so you either lose yeah. the unit yeah. in terms of providing an yeah. affordable uh, opportunity to a household in your town, or you find some money to buy it down and put in that new deed rider and preserve it. So I think that the term you called it buy down, which is a good yeah. term. Some people call this preservation. So okay. you're preserving the affordable housing right. restriction through that buy-down process is the terminology that people often use. So, uh, uh, just one more thing, Barry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, from the discussion when Tim came in, I think the objective was to have a discussion tonight and then post a meeting in the next three meetings to have a vote. Okay. So I'll assume that's still a working condition. And that would, for uh, uh, the audience's benefit, that's, you know, there's one more meeting in May and two in June. I think June 19th might be the last meeting from a time frame. Um, I think it might be appropriate for me to ask town council, number one, and I don't really mean this specific discussion, but for the broad topic, whether that can be had in executive session. Because mm -hmm. it is negotiation. It is, well, it's negotiation of real estate. Right. right. And I don't know. It may. I have no idea. I just never thought of it until we were here tonight. Um, I think the board needs to understand regardless of how it comes out on this one topic, but it may influence it, is what are the other options that exist right. to use trust fund money? What's the bang for the buck? Yeah. And, and then also, too, how do, we, how, do we, how do we just continue to augment that fund? So that right, so you've right. got a specific issue in front of you, and I, I'm certainly aware of the timeliness of it, and I don't mean to be disrespectful of it, but you have a bigger issue here. And Parenthetically, the bigger issue is how to get more funds into the trust fund. Right. So this has become a more ongoing problem. I mean, how, how do we know one of the 40 R's is going to require right. some kind of subsidy? That we, you know, we we've know had staff and, and legal we conversations about some of the large we're projects in town. No, no. And I, I don't want to go much further, but let's just say there could be significant bang for your buck mm -hmm. opportunities. Or, I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, it may be different than this one. It may be different than this discussion, but... It may create more than what one. What concerns me in the back of my mind on anything we discuss is where we started the conversation with Abbott and Costello. <laughs> We're having this discussion. We think we know the House will then go on the SHI. Right. What if it doesn't? Yeah. None of us can know for sure. Well, we'll go on the SHI because we'd make sure whatever we do is ironclad, Well, I think in this particular right? case, there has been, as Larry mentioned, discussions with DHCD <coughs> of what would be required to get this this one unit on the SHI just to make sure going into this conversation. And that person is definitively charged with making decisions? Yes. Rendered yes. that decision? Yes. Okay. So, so the question I want to ask my colleagues here is if would your decision to spend trust fund money be different if this was already on the register versus getting it on the register? In other words, the fact that it's, it now counts as a zero will count as a one. Would you would your thinking be different if it was a one and stay a one? The there's a there's another piece to the before you can answer that question. The piece that Bob has just brought up, I think, is not small, and that is what are the, what are our opportunities for affordable housing? Where do we get the biggest bang for our buck? And so, in order to be able to answer that, we re, I mean. None of those options have been presented to us. Right. Yeah. And so in order to be able to vote, you know, you, you kind of have to know that information. Oh, I think yeah. we need I'm to work you. on I mean, it in a yeah. very timely way because we've got a homeowner, a resident, right. yeah. who 
is ready to go. Like anything else, uh, like that, that, uh, and that discussion yeah. does not have to slow down this process. Good, I, in my opinion. I mean, so, is, we've so had this fund for we've had this fund for six, seven, nine years now, and we, it, it's never been big enough to do anything meaningful with. That's correct. And we haven't figured out a way to make it bigger to do something meaningful with. When I wrote this stuff, we were getting millions of dollars from downtown developers. Yeah. We could create projects, right? I mean, what can we do? Do something with Habitat? Do we build one unit? I mean, the, the yeah. limitation is small. I mean, if we were able, the only thing that seems to me that makes sense to use this fund, if it's not going to be significantly bigger, is to take little pieces and subsidize subsidize units as they come up. I'm still not satisfied with that as sort of like the best way to go because I think, I think there we is should the other the other challenge that you talked about, and that's something that I mean one of our jobs is to always protect the the backdoor liability of the town. And so you know if this is a one one, if I look at it in a certain way. If it's a zero one, I look at it differently. I'll right. just be honest with right. you, Barry. Um, I have a question. You said there are six, seven other properties? Seven. Seven other properties. Um, with 270000 in the trust, is the uh, does the assessed value change the delta from 60000 to something more? The appraised value? Appraised. Yeah. appraised. Yes, we were just talking about that. We, so if instead of three hundred fifty thousand dollars, it's appraised at, let's go to an extreme four hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? I don't think it's going to appraise well, that. Well, no, but I mean, just for yeah, hypotheticals for here, example. right? Right, because well, what I'm looking at is it's not just specific to this particular property. Mm -hmm. It's what happens when these other seven properties face similar issues. The two hundred seventy thousand dollars just isn't going to get us very far to balance no, point. Correct. Yeah. So. It's really a, it's a two prong issue. What we do with the specific property, being cognizant of the fact that we have seven other properties going in the same direction. So, and remember, how does assessed value affect that? Appraised value. Appraised value. Excuse um, me. Not appraised. Good. Well, so it's been indicated by the owner's attorney that the appraised value is actually much higher than is being discussed tonight. Um, but I think that appraised value that appraisal is supposed to be submitted with the notice to sell. So it should be it, that should be a number that's known, that, so that we know what the ask is. Right. When you're I mean, I would want to see that appraisal before I vote a nickel. Right. Okay. So I mean, that's a big unknown that just recently was brought up. Right. Yeah. In my mind. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't. In, to answer your question, I don't think it would change how I would move forward. The the question to me is really, if it, it is really a $60,000 investment to get an affordable unit added to our list. Um, uh, obviously, we can't build an affordable unit for $60,000, I, I don't think. Um, so, so to me, that's attractive. But Bob, are there cheaper way, are there, uh, are you implying that there will be cheaper ways to get an there, affordable? There are other possible options, is the fairest thing I can say. Okay, but right now we don't know of a deal I that's better. I haven't had a discussion with any of you about that. Right, well. In the spirit of addressing this particular property, giving them time sensitive, wanting to be time sensitive to the current owner, can we, as Bob had suggested, meet in executive session to determine how we want to, what the options are for this particular unit? Mm -hmm. I don't know what is and isn't allowed to be an executive session, and I'd rely on town council, but look, right, so cool. I think there's Ray. some other information the board needs to have, and it may have absolutely no influence over your current decision. You just need to hear it, because honestly, you know, the thing I'm going to talk to you about is a long-term thing. But you need to hear it. Yeah, I don't want you to say, why didn't you bring that up? Right. Um, but I don't know what is and is not a candidate to be executive session. I've Ray never heard the, of one with right. affordable housing before. Well, it's about real estate. Isn't it is. It fits the, a lot of the categories because the board is not normally doing real estate. But and it's tied to a negotiation. It's tied to real estate. It's right. tied to yeah, a the lot board has had executive so sessions in the past. Normally fit into that criteria. Yeah, I mean, um, negotiating a specific. The year. board has had executive sessions on looking at real estate to buy in the past. Let's just say. Uh, yeah. I mean, can we just get Ray's take on that? Yeah. And, um, 
you know, so the other I don't yeah. think that slows down an answer to the housing authority and to the seller at all. It's just another piece of information you ought to hear. And if it needs to be an open session, I'll just have the discussion in open session. Of your your thoughts on yeah. additional ways. Can we yeah, do that? You're saying we're two weeks away from being able to have that discussion. Yeah, I think so. The next meeting, your next meeting. You know, I think and we owe that to all parties to right. timely. Yeah. I was going to say, and whether you want to uh, plan to meet in the last meeting of May, first in June, I know you're not here, or the last one in June for this purpose is, right. it makes no difference to me. We should be able to hit any schedule. The, the, the other thing, too, I, so the sooner I, the better. That, that, I, that I worry about, I, I know that we'll, put, I know at the end of the day we're going to do the right thing for everybody because I, I just know that we're going to do that. <coughs> the problem, I, I, I just my, my confidence and all the, the, the integrity of everybody involved. My problem is, is that we do that. And now Mr. Jones next year comes and said, you did that for Mrs. Smith, and yeah. now we don't have the money, or we don't have enough money. And then, you know, it's like, well, why'd you do it for them and not for us? So I, yeah. I think we need to think about, and again, it's an unknown factor, because there's six of these other ones on there. They might sell next year, they might sell in five years. We don't know what the assessed, or the appraised value of those units will be, and what will be needed, and we don't know what they paid for it. So we don't know what potentially our impact is. So I, I think we need to, have some kind of a figure in mind. Are all of these pre 2006? Yeah, they're all, they were all originally created in 1996, 1997. Yeah, so, so they're going to track one after well, the Well, some other. of them have resold right. since. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they've been recycled into yep. a, right. maybe a different set of documents. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, haven't I guess really we haven't have to do that research, but so you, you do have and a trail. You have the choice of of preserving or buying down one and not doing the next one. Well, obviously, you know, we don't have the funds, we won't do it. One right? I as mean, they come up. I, 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 I'm more concerned about sort of if there are more of these, uh, is there a longer term solution that we can then, as a policy, yeah. say, yeah. this is what we think it's going to cost, this is where we think we're going to get the money from, so that, you know, someone deciding that they want to sell and move to Ohio doesn't trigger this kind of thing where we're running around trying to figure out how we're going to solve it. So, yeah. so well, this doesn't put us any, under any obligation to do the same thing for the next seller, does it? Not legally. No, but I mean, it's more so again, it's a fair question about I, how does somebody look at that? I mean, honestly, you've got to find, I think, you got to find something that can be recreated each and every time that actually <coughs> makes some sense. Do you penalize the first one because you've got enough money to make that right. the delta between the buy down and the real equity value vanish into right. space? Now you've got, if I'm the guy on the other side, I'm not happy with right. that. We might be penalizing the later guy. Wow. Yeah, how and then, so, how so, so. then you go to the later, no, you're not penalizing the later guy, you're enriching the Oh, because we guy. don't have the money to buy it. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's, exactly. but the so money goes I back to oh, I think the seller will, will get their yeah. price, irrespective of what you do here. What yeah. you're talking about is what the buyer's going to buy in at. And the buyer right now is unknown. They're not. They're not it's in not the, the market. They have to be party. identified. Either. So, we don't so I mean, out. I think that the seller is based it's on the appraisal be. and the discount rate and the deed writer it's and all of that. So that's not really related to your. Yeah. So the seller, so the, the, sell, the seller is going to get a percentage of whatever that price right. is. Vanessa, you had a question. Uh, so regarding the executive session, I recently went to an open meeting law training and uh, under purpose six to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. If the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, well, that seems like this fits into that category. But I would like Rick Ray to yep. confirm yeah, I just that. Don't know if affordable housing too. is an exception for some reason. Mm -hmm. it's, but it's a, it's the expenditure of public funds. It's a trust fund. It's a little different. Trust fund, yeah. Can we? Well, just let's just let's so just get, let's just we'll get right. Yeah, big, yeah, yeah. It's not going to slow us down. No. That's the one. If it's going to be involved. Yeah, yeah, so okay, so. Unless anybody has anything else to add, I just because I I do want to kind of move on just to kind of sort of what's our what's our path here. Okay. So, Bob, so do you have your takeaways? And we'll I do, it. but is it the board's intention to uh, attempt to solve this at your next meeting in May? Hold on. Uh, hold one second, David. Oh, sorry. sorry, just just yep. one more point. Just going back to David Chanel for the summer. Uh Mr. Chair, uh, the concept of precedent was brought up earlier. Uh, I'm informed by the, the board of listing agent for this property that another unit in the same development that had a similar issue with the deed rider was allowed to sell for fair market with a, mm. uh, in the past few years. 
with a similar same deed rider, same deed rider issue market value with a, um, a percentage of that paid back into the town. Into the house to the housing authority. Actually, that, it's not that's not exactly right. What happens? We purchased it at the discount price, and then we sold it oh. at market rate, and the deed rider was, um, you know, was was. Uh, that's the way. That's the way. So, so you purchased it, it, and then yeah, and then is a reserve right. <laughs> gorge. Because why are we anguishing you over this? <laughs> we they have a slightly at, different mission. You asked me a question. <laughs> yeah. You asked me. If, well, we purchased it at the discount price. Right. It wasn't affordable for us to rent it out. It cost too much for us to keep it. So when we could sell it, when we sold it at market rate, then we got the the delta of the twenty percent, and that went into our reserves, and we used that money. For um, I, you know, I think for maintaining properties, and um, I think we use one another one for windows and and and. and uh, but we did not preserve that unit. No, correct. That, you know, was, uh, their first priority is maintaining. And that's what's going to happen to all these home ownership units. Every time they come up, yeah, that's you know, our previous executive director had to you know try to beat them up on the price and try, try to find somebody. It was very difficult because to get somebody at the income, uh, at the correct income. Who could purchase it at at this price was you know it was it, it's hard to right. that's just it's impossible i now. have no it's problem with that i have and a list of uh, eligible uh, not eligible buyers but what i call interested buyers we sold an affordable house in saugus last week in one day yeah uh, i the uh uh, I have no doubt that, they, that they if you guys are maintaining fast. the yeah. sort of the bullpen the right of pre-qualified at the affordable price, right. price. price. At the she's affordable talking about two hundred and five thousand. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and then we will have litigation if if uh, if yeah, yeah. the intent is that we're going to try to force her to sell it at two hundred five thousand. Right. Uh, on behalf of the seller, that would back the seller into a, a corner at two hundred five thousand. Okay. All right. Well, she's not obligated to sell it at two hundred five thousand. She's obligated to sell it at eighty percent of whatever the value is. So, well, which, which pre pre presumably is at eighty percent. Yes. Right. That's an interpretation. Right. Exactly. Right. That's an interpretation. So, DHCD does not does not um, right. 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 So okay. So just just to kind of wrap this up, um, Bob, you're going to talk to Ray. See if we can meet in executive session. So May fifteenth is what we'll shoot for. And that's our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Then then we and can. I'll let you know. I'll let the housing authority know. I'll let David know. Now with that now now is that our meeting or is that all of us in the executive um, session? It depends or does it on matter? what I hear. I, I can't say. For okay. Now. I'll right. just keep you informed. Well, it's an interesting problem to have in the sense that we can create an affordable unit potentially. It's a really tricky problem because it just begs the question about how things were done in the past that could potentially you know bite us and, and obviously we can't change what happened in the past we can only just make sure that anything we create is ironclad um, we have some money not enough um, not even enough to solve this problem probably um, so that's another longer term discussion, not an, not an executive session, but an open session. How do we grow this fund? And because I think that there's other things potentially we might be able to do. Can I just Julie? Yeah. Right. So I'm not sure what the understanding is or what the agreement will be, but I'm not sure that the seller is obligated to wait for you guys to have your meetings. Right. No, so no, no, yep. out there. Right. Okay. That's understood. Right. right. Okay. So I mean, but isn't, th isn't there something in here that says that once it's on the market, there's a certain number of days of right of first refusal that somebody could buy this? Yep. Julie Johnston, Executive Director of the Reading Housing Authority. I believe the deed rider states with regards to your question, Mr. Chairman, is that um, you have to receive the appraisal first before the so-called clock starts ticking. And we have not received the okay. appropriate appraisal yet. Um, and someone who's read this more, time, more carefully than me, um, is there, a, is there, a, is there, a, what's the clock? 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? I forget. I think it's nine. I think yeah, we have 30 days to, uh, to, to, respond. to respond. Okay. So we should be good within that two week, in this two week window, right, Julie? Yeah. Well, I guess the clock hasn't started ticking yet. Right. Really. No. Okay. Yeah, right. so I think I already have this. David. Turn it in tomorrow. David, David. yeah. Right. We're moving forward in, in good faith, Mr. Chairman, and we're giving all benefit of the doubt to the enforceability of the deed rider. Uh, but I have 
some questions about the jurisdiction, uh, jurisdictional issues raised by the vagueness challengeability of the deed rider subject to the time and waiting limit. My client's being patient. She wants to sell her house. She doesn't want to challenge that. So we're right. waiting patient. So, uh, so it sounds like there's a lot of room for, for figuring out a solution here, is what I'm hearing. So um, anything else? Did I miss anything? Anybody else have? Tim? I just said one other thing. That there, was, uh, there is another $35,000, which is making its way into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, a payment from artists that came to, to the Housing Authority. And Julie's been talking with, uh, with, with somebody about uh, but that's to, that, sh that was incorrectly paid to us, and it should go it will be going into the affordable housing trust fund. So that's, and I don't believe it's in yet. That was the best deal they ever made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's another. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah. One hundred seventy-five thousand. Yeah. Well, that's another discussion, but not with you and mm -hmm. not now. Um, exactly. Any mm -hmm. anything else on this? So we're clear. You're going to talk to Ray. Yeah. Um, you'll let. I guess let us know. Yeah, I'll let you know um, as soon as I know what the options are. And then we can sort of figure it out from there. Okay. Um, great. Well, I, I want to thank you guys again. Yeah, I mean, thanks very much. I, and also, I, I do want to echo what Gene said earlier. I probably should have said it first. Um, I think there is opportunity for the Housing Authority and the Board now to work better together than maybe has been done in the past and look at other opportunities, not just, you know, kind of crises as they emerge. So, um, and I, we're glad we're, we're well represented with a consultant, and I know that you're doing a really great job in terms of identifying um, approvable buyers so that if we, when we do create these things, we'll be able to slide people right in. Um, that's gonna be the important part, because like I said earlier, we just work too darn hard to create these units, um, and we need to do everything we can to think about keeping them, while also, also and, and increasing them, because that's gonna be the challenge, so. All right, thanks everybody. We're only running 15 minutes late, so. Um, okay. okay. All right, uh, two minutes, we'll take a two minute recess.
Okay, we're back in. Uh, ready to go. We're back in session. Okay. Um, where am I? Last VASC. item or next to last item on the jet? All right, is the VASC. Okay. So just re really quickly, um, we as we do at the end of every fiscal year, we have to reappoint. Um, people who are already on and find new members for the for the 40 some odd boards and commissions that we have and and I think um, Dan and I serve as uh, members of the VASC and we've asked Caitlin to kind of put together all the folks whose terms are expiring as well uh, both on regular members and uh, associate members so that between now and June um, you know sort of following up on the on the spirit of my state of the town address is to really put out there and recruit the best people we can to fill these positions um, so Dan and I've talked a little bit about it with Bob I, I'll let Dan let you kind sure. of share yeah. some of those things and get the sense of the board about how we want to proceed yeah. knowing that well there's two things one is that we really got to get this taken care of short term so right. that we have everybody appointed but then there's a longer term discussion in terms about how we want to do volunteers uh, going forward which I want to spend a little bit less time now that it's 930 and more time on the short term which is moving forward. Can I give a brief history of how we yep. came about here? Uh, used to be the Board of Selectmen would interview directly all, all the, the folks applying and that could include incumbents, it always included new people. Uh, that, that took several meetings and a lot of the board's time. So uh, the notion of uh, the volunteer appointment subcommittee came up about six, seven years ago. I can't remember exactly. I think it was just before I got back on again uh, with the idea that the subcommittee would pre-interview both incumbents and new people, generally the incumbents selectively and only if there was a competition for their slot or if there was some issue with the person that the chair had elevated to our attention. And that seems to have been working pretty well. Uh, I mean, we had some issues last year. We all know about what those were. Uh, a couple of things we, we need to talk about uh, short term are, uh, are well, Caitlin, uh, you said you, you did the postings earlier in the year. Uh, so, yeah. yes, a while ago when we were having this brief discussion, when we were talking about associate members, I think with your topic, mm -hmm. um, you had me put together a list of every associate board that had an associate member yep. position. And so when I did that, I also went through and just posted all the vacancies mm -hmm. that we had on all the boards as well as associate positions. So that was posted either at the end of the year or the beginning of this year. I can't remember the exact date. I can go back and look. Um, and that's still posted up outside the town clerk's office and on online. Okay. Um, we have had very few, we've had some applications come in, but very few, some boards, not others. So we just posted the associates or everything? I posted I, everything. Oh, oh, okay, so everybody who is expiring 630, 18? Uh, I would so that's say, a separate no, list. Oh. So I post yes, all okay. the vacancies as of right okay. now, not vacancies. including everyone's terms that are people that terms are expiring. Yeah. Um, those won't get posted until. Well, I have to go through and send out them letters so I don't even know they're expiring. But do we post them in anticipation of maybe being interviewing for those slots in addition to? allowing the incumbents uh, to re-up? Um, or should we be thinking of changing that policy and posting a little bit earlier? So yeah. we, yeah, we never have made a, a separate posting for when they were expiring, but I could yeah. go through and do a new posting that says all the vacancies we have now, mm -hmm. including associate members, and then all um, terms that are expiring. Right. Yeah, I think that so would that be could be more right, and then and then the normal process is that if there was people that whose terms are expiring, they get a letter that's saying right. Right. So your that's terms. Letter, if you want to re up, uh, yeah. right. we so send a letter. I say, do you want to continue, right. or are you all set and do not want to volunteer anymore? I get those letters back. If they want to continue, their name goes into the pool again and gets put in with all the other candidates that may apply for that. For that board all well. right, so let's say we, we posted for someone who already holds the slot. Um, here, here's I, I came up with some potential rules, which the board is free to rearrange, criticize, support, whatever. And I just read it literally. In terms of reappointing incumbents, I would do it automatically if they do all three of these things. Submit an application for reappointment. In the view of the uh, board committee or 
commission chair, have attended most meetings and contributed to the well-being of the board, committee, and commission, and three, there are no new applicants for their positions. Now, incumbents will need to appear before the VASC if one is true, in other words, they submit the application and there's an issue from the chair or there are competition for, for the slot. That's so, so that we would interview even an incumbent if there was someone else that right. wanted the job. Okay. And an incumbent can always request to be interviewed. We can't obviously oh, throw them down if right. they want to do that. If they want to be I interviewed. I would suggest that, it, that an expiring incumbent should always be interviewed. That's my well, opinion. If you do that, that's a big job. That's a lot. That's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. And that, we can talk about that. There's and no one else has applied to. Yeah. Uh, and there's an advantage to do that because you can pick their brain about how the board's been going. Uh, what, what can we do to support you? Right. Is there maybe another board you want to move over to? It would be great to hear from that person, mm. I think. Yeah. No, I always thought so, too. Even when we're it's it's but, more work. But even it's still, work. what happened was is that, you know, then you know, you're doing your annual thing where there's yeah. just people doing it. Then that periodically you're meeting because there's a vacancy that you need to kind of want to fill. So the VASC is constantly... Right. You know, that's it's actually, I mean, fun, given the I think scope of the, of really the committees good. that yeah. we work with and that, you know, are advisory to us, I think it does have to go on all the time. Right. I think it's an ongoing thing, and I get that it's extra work, but I think it's really important. I, it's I, think, important. Yeah. I think incumbents should visit the VASC. Um, and I, I just think for all the aforementioned reasons, right. there's value to that. I also think... Just like there's term limits on the FinCom, I think we should consider term limits on every committee. Well, that, that's the future when we talk about that's the future policy so, too. So, John, yeah. I, I like your idea of making sure that we're in contact with yeah. um, these boards. From a practical perspective, how many people are we talking about that the VASC would need to interview every Dozens. May? I would say any because like 40. 40. Yeah. yeah. That's, in For addition sure. to, I, 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 my concern is only, does it become unwieldy? Because forty interviews, that's a that's a tremendous number. Well, these are not these are not. That would take I mean, six to eight best meetings. I'm guessing mm -hmm. if we apportion it ten minutes per person. Right. I, I like. Well, your, these interviews go quickly. I mean, generally. it's a ten it's a ten minute. I mean, when I was it's serving doable. the best, okay. it's essentially a t it's not like a, a job yeah. interview. Yeah. It's not a you know. I've done it twice. It's yeah. a, it's a ten minute thing usually, unless you engage in a meaningful conversation right. that is really right. helpful then it has a value we've been struggling now for years to be able to communicate with the committees yeah. and we haven't found a good way to do it no right. we've talked about chairs and vice chairs we've talked about a workshop we've talked about yep. a lot of things but because of the scope of all of these committees it, it's become a difficult my opinion is if you start with the incumbents now what happens is on, a, on an ongoing basis, you're here. The, the board of selectmen are hearing back from not only new applicants, but people who are experienced. They're going to tell you what's going right. They're going to tell you what's going wrong. They're going to, you know. I just think there's a real value to that. I, I like it. My the idea of being in contact in whatever um, format that takes. My hesitation in tying it to when their terms expire is if they have concerns and how things are being handled by, say, hypothetically, this board. Are they going to want to be forthcoming as they're being considered for reappointment? I think they're a lot more Can forthcoming when they're talking to two people off camera because these are not generally televised. They are posted right. meetings. Uh, uh, but, but can we perhaps separate out those interviews? So I, to, to your point, when you right. laid out the guidelines, we have them reapply, we interview them um, if there are other applicants. However, if there are not other applicants, right. do we have a separate conversation? Regardless of, of the reappointment process, have a separate conversation with them about the state of their board. Uh, but I, I think the uh, the the purpose of the VASC um, is not to increase communication with the boards. Uh, the, that here to four has it done. Here to four, and and I, I don't think it should be. Well, the liaisons kind of do that. The liaisons should yeah. should be doing that. We don't have to go to all their meetings. We can talk to the chair and find out the salient points. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think that's the liaison is the way communication should be go going. Uh, back and forth and if we identify problems and so often they come into our meetings 
and give us a report, and we can ask them questions yeah, we'd the, like the entire board. But I, I think we should rest restrict the VASC to, um, to, to interviewing candidates. Yeah, but when you're interviewing them, you're having a conversation about, right. you know, you're talking to the, you know, if the, you know, if the chairs are involved, say, okay, well, we have two openings. You know, you know, what's the skill set you need on that board, right? You've got, you know, I'm, I'm making something up. You have the build, you have the building, com you know, the uh, permanent building committee, and you have three architects. Well, you don't need another architect. Maybe you need a project. So manager. you do this with the chair for the full board. Um, I, I think. I, I think bringing the chair into the interview process. What do you think of that? I, I, I think or it's at least as a preliminary step to interviewing people. I, I think it's. I, I think it's good. The more you know. The, we want to try to f we want to try to find the right behind with, for the right seat, right? And, and, and so, yeah. you know, yeah. part of that is sort of understanding quite put what way. they do and what they need. I mean, you know, you might have because these because we don't we haven't really thought strategically about this in the past. It's sort of like generally whoever raised their hand kind of got on, and and that's great. We appreciate that. But you know, if there's something that a committee is dealing with, and they said, you know, we really need somebody who's good at this. Yeah. Right, that's a great conversation well, to have, and that's that's where I would add some content to the application that would maybe list uh, interest areas, not spe just to specific boards, but you know, what did, what did I say here? You know, uh, finance, conservation, outdoor activity, sports, economic development, mm -hmm. and that might suggest different vectoring of them to a different area. Right. Remember this: yeah. we have moved people into committees that were not their original choice. And then we've renewed them mm -hmm. over and over. And because they found that it was a good fit. <laughs> yeah. Or they figured this is what I get, and right. so this is where I'm going to stay. Right. And I, I honestly think, look, I, I mean, there's a lot of ways to communicate with the boards and committees and commissions. I get that. And the liaison is a, is a way to do that. When they visit, it's a way to do that. To me, the reapplication for the job um, you know, I serve on a lot of boards that have nothing to do with town government. They are typically at, on, at the pleasure of the organization one year at a time. And I'm thanked for my service, and I'm offered to re-enroll if I would like to do so. And generally, that's tied to a discussion with somebody from their nominating committee, which mm -hmm. is our VASC. Yeah. I mean, that is fairly commonplace and I think it's a best practice that we're avoiding and I, I, I don't, and I don't think we should avoid it I think it's a best practice I agree so Dan um, yes. well first Caitlin yes we're gonna know how you know what's available <coughs> by each committee both in terms of who's expiring yes. and also the vacancies for you. I can make a list of everyone that's expiring on June 30th mm -hmm. in the committee that they're on and then and, and, and then associates I can make as well. you yes and then I can give you a list of what has current vacancies yep. not including the people right. that are right. expiring okay. and then the, then the idea becomes how how do we going to how are we going to advertise this in terms of what's available so usually it's a post a like I did a large posting last time because I went through and I posted all the vacancies. I can do that again and include the people that are expiring on June 30th. Uh, how, how, how is our posting done? Uh, where does it go? It goes to the town clerk. She's the yeah. official, it has to get time stamped by her. She yeah. has specific areas in which she needs to post it for it to be Physically legal. posted. Yep. Paper. It's posted outside sure. of her office. And then there's also a site of page on the website that has volunteer okay. opportunities yep, that it's listed that. on. And that's on there too. Um, and I can we post this to social anywhere. media? Yeah. yeah. With, with really yeah. cool job descriptions? Yeah. Like kind of, Yeah, I mean, you know. I think we could put it on our, <laughs> as much as we can. Well, we couldn't put it on our Facebook page advertising, yeah. but we have um, we volunteers. And then, and then, uh, yeah, Bob, sorry. I just think to go back to your earlier comment, there's a long-term and a short-term discussion here. I think the long-term's got to take you some time to figure yeah, it out. Right. Yeah. Um, with all due respect to your time, I will tell you that appointing volunteers, just like hiring employees, is the single most important thing we all do. Yeah. It just is. They are the faces of the organization. And it sets the tone of, it does. of, of so, kind of... 
I think you need to really think about your whole process, not just, well, the VASC was a great idea. Why are you pointing everyone once a year? Do you want to stagger that? Do you want to split it up? I mean, there's lots of things you could really think about. Personally, I think the flaw in the way the process has been done in the past is you ask people to volunteer for a board. Yeah. I think you should decide what board, given their interest and skill set, they would belong to. We ask. We should be asking them to volunteer. Yes. And, and then that should be a generic. You know, find the right place for that. Right. And then you have to redo the form because right now the form right. has ch checking boxes. Just just yeah. the boards. And, and they would certainly be free to put in a comment section something yeah. about I really like FinCom, whatever. But you're already pigeonholing them before you even. Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're not pigeonholing. Well, they're we're asking they're them. Applying to. But we're asking them to pigeonhole themselves, or there's no way to get in and yeah. see the VASC. So I, I have reservations about this. I, I like the idea of, of being able to have people sh demonstrate their interest if you want to streamline one form and they can decide which ones they want to apply to. But I don't think that, I think we will lose volunteers. If I apply for FinCom and someone looks at me and says, well, it'd be great for trails. trails. Well, I have no interest in trails, perhaps. So we need to allow, these are volunteer positions, we need to be able to allow people to say, I have interest in X. Perhaps when we interview them, or when the Basque interviews them, we can say... X being a skill area? What was that? No, a board committee. A board committee. Yeah. So if you're applying for one of the 40 boards... Uh, they, they can number them, I think. Yes, yeah, so the application yeah. does say to number, I think, your Order top preference. three or four preferences. However, a lot of people tend to just check off one right. because that's, that's the, the one they have they their mindset on. Yeah. But um, it does okay. say... Well, we can add maybe something on the bottom that says, you know, what are you, you know? What are your general you interests? Know, interests. Yeah. Or do you want do you want to definitize that into specific areas? Uh, all all my point is that the, the longer term thing? discussion is right. Right. big size. Yeah. Right. right. The problem is we have to right. We have to appoint in the next six weeks. Right. Six weeks. Six weeks. Eight weeks. Yes. I think Seven, you, need, you should do it at your nineteenth meeting. Yeah, yeah. where well, you're not here, especially. Oh, oh, to do the final. Yeah. To do the yeah. final. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can't wait till the first meeting in July because right. they have already expired. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. So we have to. So if working backwards, Bask has to start now. soon. So we have yes. to then start. Bask has got to get started right away. We have to put it out there. We have to yeah. let 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 time for fifteen days. Well, you've already posted though. So there's a ton of vacancies that have already been posted. So the but fifteen days is more, an issue. more yeah. probably ninety nine percent. There's just a few that have come in past two weeks of. A couple new ones. So we have one from the Board of Health. Yep, I just one got from that. Cemetery so, like that, had, I could post that one separately because mm -hmm. that hasn't. Yeah. But other vacancies that have been vacant forever have yeah. been posted forever. And if we have, right. And, and we, I have a few applications, but not a lot. So maybe we do this as like advertise them all. This is what's available. We have to let time for it, it to go. And then maybe we set up well, four or five VASC meetings. Are we allowed to use uh, media? Like yep. you, sure. okay. uh, so, Caitlin, are you engaging. talking about when you say posting these positions? I know that you've posted the openings that already exist. Yes. Are we, uh, I, I, my understanding was that we at, were asking for the positions that come up that expire in 2018 to also be posted. Yes. Right. 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 That, so that you have them sense. too. Right. Yep. So I'll, when I go through and, and create my list of people that are expiring, I'll just okay. yeah. put those on a, another mm -hmm. list saying these are. And this way, we'll for the VASC and just start inviting them. Yeah. yeah. And, and, right. And what we want to do. So my letters asking the incumbents if they want to continue or not, um, I'll try and get up Thursday. Right. And then so they get them, they'll get them this weekend, and then okay. we'll start getting those back. And you guys can give me some dates that you're available, and we can start. We should, yeah. You're, you're probably, probably the more restrictive. Yeah, but you know what? I, 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 I mean, this is the most right. important thing I think we're going to do between now and the end of June. Um, I mean, you so, can do them up until right. your final meeting, but yeah. you probably need to start if you want to see all. Incomes. If we needed to. Call another meeting before the June ends. There's another. There's another there's Tuesday. Another week. Yeah. 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 Barry and I have talked about the window. You have plenty of time if you're <laughs> flexible. Right. I mean, yeah. I, and I can make myself available. If I, it has to be three, four, five nights. And, and the thing is, too, is what we want to avoid. What happened last time is that somebody applied and we, we set a meeting, and it's like, oh, you got to come in two days at six fifteen. Right. It's yeah. like, well, mm -hmm. you know, we got to give people. Yeah. yeah. It probably has to work through you, and you're just gonna you're just gonna fill the calendar. Yeah. Right. 
Well, well yeah, so if we have like a couple dates from you guys, and if I, like I can start off sending the applicants like, hey, can you make this day? And if they say no, then I can say, well, we do have some other dates available. Right. I can fill it that way. I can actually, I can check my calendar, just email you guys. Yes, just, this is the nights I can do. Why right. you start it off and then I'll, okay. I'll Where did we come out, Barry? Go ahead. Who went first? Go ahead. Uh, where did we come out um, on Dan's proposal as far as, as, far as whether the, the need to interview people who are already on the board, the terms of our committee or commission, their terms up in 2018? Are, you, are we going to try to bite that off? I, I have some concerns about doing that. Yeah. And I, I'd, I'd rather, for now, and we can change it later, but for this round, yeah. um, I, I like your idea. If it, it, they, they reapply, if, if they if they've not attended a number of meetings, or the chair has some it feels they have not contributed, you know. Um, so we need to compose a letter. Those are very. Both of those are very subjective. Of course, you know. Yeah. But to so me, are, it's so, so simple and straightforward to adopt a, de a best practice to. Interview the person. What what is the objection? We, to that? We, no, there is no. The objection is only no, if there are no no other applicants. Right. To me, that 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 doesn't have anything to do with the question. Well, to me, they're just two issues. They're they're two scenarios. So if one scenario, if there's applicants, Joe, would you agree that involving the chair, uh, at least to get some input or feedback from them, is, is a good practice? I I do think it's a good practice, and I think it's going to be one that you're going to be hard pressed to get. Maybe get them to time. do that because yeah. now you're bringing one more Another person person's. into the equation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the chair is also up for reappointment. They could be. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it, to me, it's so straightforward. It keeps it universally simple. No subjective criteria. Everybody comes in. You're interested or you're not. And if you've got four or five dates, yep. I mean, I get that you can't say okay. You're going to be here Thursday at 6:15, and it's Tuesday. Right. That you know, that's really not fair. But if you say we have these five dates, and the following times are still available, when can you come? So, are you proposing near term? We try to interview all incumbents. I'm trying to get what you're I'm trying, trying to. Ahead. What I'm trying to do. Or is that what I, I suggest to you that a best practice is that everyone who is renewable, mm -hmm. okay. As a, as a first step this year. I have a whole different discussion when we get to the yeah, big discussion. However, yeah. oh, and that's not for tonight, and that's not for the yep. June 2018, right. I get that. But to me, if you're, if you're interested in renewing your membership on a board commissioner committee, mm -hmm. can you come in and spend 15 minutes with us? Once yeah. every three years, I mean, right. This is and not, a, it's not onerous. It's not going to be optional. optional. I'm not they, saying yeah. No, I say it's yeah. not optional. It's not optional? No, why would it be optional? I would say it's really <laughs> optional if there's no there's no yeah. other applicants because then uh, it serves no purpose to bring them in. Other than our education is to put I think that it does But frankly, we have liaisons who are supposed to be serving in that capacity anyway. So we're essentially yeah. asking someone to come in with no purpose. If the liaison a, being at a meeting is very different, I think it's different than two members of the VASC having yeah. a conversation right. with an incumbent. I don't think that the would liaison like can make a full evaluation of a. <clears throat> Depends on how deeply you are into the board. I mean, well, how some boards we attend more than others. Some we watch more. You know what? I, 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 I'll go. I'll go to as many meetings as we need to have. Right? We're interviewing at most forty people. Yeah. Around maybe yeah, you know, really. and we maybe we get, and maybe but we get lots of apple. I mean, yeah. well, you know what? That's a good problem to have. We'll yeah. figure it out. But I think that we have to be careful if we if we're choosing to institute this process this um, process now. Yeah. Going forward, we, we've already admitted that we need to have a broader discussion on how we handle volunteers and the VASC. This is a major change from what we're doing. Before That's we true. take this step in interviewing everybody who's up for reappointment, even if there are no <coughs> other applicants, then perhaps we table that discussion for this round of interviews, mm -hmm. keep it the way we've been going, and then have the broader discussion. And Frankly, only interview those. It's really not that much different. It's not that different. We've been inviting incumbents. We just haven't been requiring it, right? Except in certain cases. But sometimes they come anyways. Yeah. Yes, but it's optional. So. Oh if, my God. If we uh, have a, if we have a, no other applicants for this position, and we we haven't got a, a wisp of 
information that says this this person is not not they'll submit their application and you'll see their qualifications and if we haven't got a wisp either from the liaison and I do think the liaisons they, if they go to some of the meetings they get a feel right um, and 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 then I, I think an email to the chair you know unless of course it's the chair um, you know, saying have, have, have there been any issues have they attended most of the meetings or something like that um, is good because otherwise you sit in a situation where you have this person coming before you you have no nobody else has applied and um, if if their resume is you look at their resume and they're they're qualified. Well, you don't really see the resume and the incumbents many times. You saw it years ago when they first uh -huh. applied. They tend not to send them in again. Well, they what's just, the purpose well, of the meeting? Because you're meeting with this person for ten or fifteen minutes. And then we, we ask them to send the resume again. But will they feel offended? I, I just want to manage the transition. Is this? I want to ask if anybody here would feel imposed upon if once every three years you were asked to spend fifteen minutes with the appointing authority. Uh, that's the wrong question. It's how do we set the expect reset the expectation? Because some might think, well, why are they doing this? They've never done it before. It's got to be set up carefully with the right language. It can but seem like we're micromanaging the boards. Why are, Pardon me? It can seem like we're micromanaging uh, right. the other BCCs. The micromanaging the advisory committees are is important at this level, not when they're doing their work, but to, as to Bob's point, you know, they're not. Our employees, they're our associates, but we're the appointing authority, and their work is really important to our success in trying to run this part of the government. Therefore, the opportunity to converse with them 10 or 15 minutes once every three years, I don't think is, I think it's, it's not a burden, but it's inadequate. If you, what you truly want is to have an in-depth conversation with these individuals, then it shouldn't be tied to their reappointment. It should simply be a conversation where two of the select board members um, choose to engage with these 40 individuals at a random time. Well, there's absolutely Tying no question that we need a better line purpose. of communication. We've been discussing this for years and it makes everybody's hair hurt and we stop talking about it. And that's exactly what's going on now for four years that I've been part of too. And we gotta, we gotta figure out a way to make it's the gotta, hair hurt. It's right? gotta stop. Right. Well, got but it. then let's have that as part of the broader conversation of how we wanna handle volunteers and the best as opposed to instituting this one particular policy we're just, now. We're, we're, we're talking, we're bringing people in who already serve. I don't see it really being a big... It shouldn't with yeah. the right language. Right. Hmm. Yes. But, um, I think longer term, is it's important you decide what to do, not so much short term. Um, but I will tell you, there's, there's lots of sides to micromanaging. If someone's not up for renewal and you're calling on them to come talk to you, they're going to feel like they're being micromanaged. Or the chair might feel like, what are they doing behind my back? So there's lots of things you need to think about. Yeah, that's kind of my point. My only comment will be, I've been in many VASC meetings, not as many lately. There are some astonishing things that are discussed and learned mm -hmm. by s select uh, board members. It's just, it was not planned. It was like, yeah. wow. You're not in a formal committee setting. All of a sudden, setting. you're off camera, right. and it was not planned. None of us knew of issues. Right. All of a sudden, there's a discussion that was really very helpful to have. And no one in the room could have anticipated it would have happened. It was just a good forum for yeah. it to happen. And you won't see that in a regular meeting. If so, you're and it wasn't things that had to be discussed in a meeting like this. Yeah. But it's just, it's just really helpful to open the lines of communication between members of boards and members of the Senate. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about that because I think we should be doing things as transparently as possible. How, how is it in an open meeting? Because it let, me, let me finish. Meeting. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a public meeting, but you keep and hammering home. You, you keep hammering home, hammering home the point that these discussions happen because they're off camera. Mm -hmm. To me, that indicates that the discussions are happening because they're not recorded. And, and There's minutes. Uh, Yep. Well, but minutes not everything is recorded in the record. It, it, it need necessarily be recorded in the minutes. But I don't Should think right, I don't think this is a good time to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good time to ask what in the world is lacks transparency about conducting a public meeting between people who are involved in a process of solution. Wow. Wait. This word transparency has yeah. got to start being applied where it fits. Right. Uh, we, it was just stated that people will have conversations with the VASC they would not have an open meeting. That yeah, gives well, the implication. Let me just clarify that. 
there's a number of volunteers that are new that don't know how government works, and they're very intimidated to come yep. in this room with you five on TV. Yep. Oh no, I'm not. Very intimidating yeah. experience. No, I'm not. I'm not they are much more comfortable to deal with any of you. Yeah. That's the better way to say it. That's all. But we're. I think I'm focusing on just the question of whether now we start interviewing people whose terms are up and for which we have no other applicant. Because the end result of that meeting, could, we could say, thank you very much. We have no one else to fill your position, but we would not like you to serve anymore. It is technically within our authority to remove someone from a board, even if, or from a board To not PCC, renew them. Even if we don't well, there, it's, there's have another applicant. Both things. One is not to renew. Another one's removal, which is Remember, a very different thing. The other, it has the a other, whole process. The other, the other thing is too is that the VAS only yeah. makes a recommendation. Right. right. So when <clears throat> all that is done, the VAS has okay. These are the two people from these you know, ten or fifteen right. different things. It then comes before the entire board. And then, uh, rereading our policy, uh, any member of the board can. Uh, Request that a name be taken out of the general uh, slate that the vast uses right. for right. a separate vote. Right, right. And they would presumably be interviewed by yeah. the full board. But we've never done that, to my knowledge. But I think you have. Maybe we've separated Not often. them for. We've separated them into separate votes. Yeah. We've done it many times. Right, because there's like a consent agenda. I was just like going to say, if there's one, a one-to-one yeah, one vote, you can set that aside for a discussion. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which I mean, actually I, brings up another question. Yeah. So the VASC puts forward the recommendations. However, if there are five applicants for one position, the VASC recommends one. Yeah. Not, what, not necessarily. Well, oh, or they recommend two. Right. Let's say they for recommend one two. position. If there's for, one. For one well, position. Well, could be a one. And you one recommend vote. you put forward two for the this one, whole board this to review. Well, then there's no recommendation if the right. VASC right. splits. Right. Then right. the board. Well, but if, um, if there were if five, you, think, you could pick two. Right. If you pick two to put forward, I think they're two good candidates. The entire board to review those two and choose between. I, I don't think we've ever had five people. <laughs> exactly. Right. I mean, that would be a good problem to have. Yeah, that's not the right. problem we're having two, right now. But right. Because the VASC is split. Yeah. Right. That is happening. That's okay. happening. Right. So let's say that's the situation. So we have now two. Yeah. At what point does the full board receive all of the applications for the entire five? Th they would get them in any case, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I think the full board gets all the applications. Does that? Yeah. yeah. No matter what. And if there's something like that, let's just say there's five people that that apply for one position and you know let's say we just say you know these two really stand out you know over these other three mm -hmm. we would bring them in and then they, they, they would be interviewed by the by the entire board you could do that you wouldn't want to do it for every board right I mean listen if we get five if we get five be people to problem. apply then for everything well, then it means that we're doing something right that gets to be logistic and, and then okay then then we'll think it through for the next time but I don't, it's, it's never, I mean, a lot of times we have to, you know, we have to squeeze people into applying for jobs. And, yeah. you know. That's the real problem, yeah. You know, that's more of the issue than it is about more people applying for them. But if that's the case, I would envision just bringing, you know what? They're both great. Come on in. You know. Uh, what are the thoughts to think about uh, the current policy requires, and another one we really haven't followed. Uh, that members serve only for one term and then leave. If we're going to do that, I would suggest we have staggered terms going forward. And uh, what do you mean in here? terms of the vast? Change? Yeah, yeah. Have staggered uh, two-year terms. Let's say one one of us would stay on in a one-year a provisional one-year term. A new person would be appointed for a two. Then when you expire or whoever takes it. That would become a two-year, so you keep yeah. one person's expertise. You and I have now done it. You and I now have done it for two years, yeah. and you were on before me. Right. So it's good to rotate who actually. I, but is I think on the back. having them both expire every year seems to me to not be a better. Yeah, I, I would agree. But that's that's for our discussion. Just something to think right, about. To, yeah. To, to I, think. yeah. So right now we're still. We sh why, why why don't we just. Can we uh, make a motion and take a vote on whether we should in, uh, interview uh, candidates that are up for up for reappointment, but there's no no one else has applied, or do we is, want is a mandatory interview? Yes. Yeah. Or do we want to table that as part of a larger discussion mm -hmm. regarding the VASC and the volunteers? Or I'll make the motion that the VASC uh, be instructed by the board to request an interview with every incumbent seeking reappointment. Uh, as a necessary step to being reappointed. Second. 
so the, the question is, is that if they don't come to the interview, do they not get reappointed? Is that? Well, we give them a couple of chances. That's why I want them invited early in case there's a scheduling conflict or something like that. But again, they have to they have to decide to, to reapply, yeah. right? So in but other words, if they don't reapply. Again, I want to message this thing correctly so they don't think this is the inquisition. <coughs> right, it's not the inquisition. It's yeah. not at all the inquisition. Yeah, but. It's, it's certainly not necessary, especially where the VASC is just two members. For there to be any conclusion about someone not appearing, yeah. I don't think you have a right to do that. Mm -hmm. I think the full board has a right to know. We right. invited so and so to come; they didn't come, and then you can all so choose let's, to use that information. Let's take that know. part out then as a mandatory step. Uh, um, they be invited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll remove that from my mind because I think you know where there's three of you not in the you, back. You agree that would do the trick, John? I, if, they, if they don't come, you can I, reserve. I personally see absolutely no reason mm -hmm. that somebody shouldn't spend ten or fifteen minutes once mm -hmm. every three years mm -hmm. with the VASC. I all right, you want to leave it? I up? see no reason sure. to not do that, but you know. The, the one invitation person, not, can say mandatory, here. but I'm just saying that the full board <coughs> is not bound by their appearance or not. That's, that's all. true. All right. So that's I I make uh, uh, an amendment to to the motion to 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 strike the word mandatory because I s think that sets the wrong tone right now with their volunteers. Second. Thank you. Uh, I think we've talked about. Well, it. now you have to vote on the amendment. We take discussion on the amendment and on whatever the motion is following it. Uh, yeah. uh, can you just read the, your sentence again? I feel like my town meeting. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, just what's the move the board of selectmen instruct the VASC to uh, request an interview. Uh, um, request an interview with all incumbents seeking reappointment prior to the reappointment uh, with the understanding that it is required for the reappointment. So, too many words, but I guess I just, okay, gotcha. So, and I would, so my you want to last strike that last, the last, that last clause. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with being invited if that's at all helpful. Yeah. I think yeah, as if you mind. put in somehow the sense that this is a routine matter, if you I'll somehow that. got that yeah. sense into the thing, it doesn't feel into the that. into the invitation. Ask. So but, you know, as a routine, we we'd expect you to come as a routine. You, that may be in the motion, or can that be in the invitation well, the, letter? We, we are entertaining a, 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 an amendment. Yes. So can we enter, entertain the amendment? What do you What do you? Uh, I'm about? not in favor of the amendment. I okay. think I'm leaning toward requiring an interview okay. uh, for the reasons so stated eloquently by Mr. Halsey. Any further discussion on the amendment? Do you want to take this? Yeah. One? No, 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 no. I'm just trying to move We're things along. Yeah. Okay. Aren't there three, uh, three gavels? Yeah, there are three yeah, gavels. Yeah. Three so uh, uh, on the amendment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for him to break <laughs> loose. <laughs> on the amendment. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Opposed? The amendment does not go through. What's the motion now? Uh, as I made it. Okay. Somebody write it down. Right? I would to essentially invite everyone to a required interview who is re-upping. Right. Um, You're not invited. Any 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 uh, discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. All right. So we'll try it and everybody see. Everybody comes in. Okay. Well, now they're required to come in or they're kicked off the boards. That's not no. what that's not no. what that says, no. Vanessa. Didn't say that. No. That does not say that. It, they may not get the recommendation of the VASC, but as John said, the board's free to override. There are five people here that vote on every single one of yeah. the people that's appointed. Yeah, don't miss on the VASC does, and and as Bob points out, you know, there's many factors. Um, report of the VASC, which would include, you know, some highlights of the interview. It's going to include the, the resume. It's going to include that they were present for the interview or they weren't. Yep. And then the five members of this body Think. will then go forward and make a decision as to whether or not to renew that. Think of it as a convention endorsement. They'll get the 15% to make it on the ballot, <laughs> but they won't get the endorsement. Okay. So they can still run. Right, and you know, just like town meeting, right? Someone's, you know, the, the last thing you do a town meeting is like you have the list, or yeah. they didn't come to all the meetings, and then someone says, "Well, I was sick," and yeah. there was, you know, right. mitigating circumstances, and they stay on. And so I think two of the three stayed this time. Two of the four, I think. So do you, yeah. do you agree? There's sort of checks and balances there. I mean, from the full board. It, I'm there. not. It's not so much the checks and balances that yeah. concerns me. It's 
the history of volunteers with the board and them being required to come in uh, essentially seems like they have to, even though there's no one else vying for the position, it can make them but, feel threatened. But you know, how do you know? I mean, if, if, I'm on, if I'm on the Conservation Commission and I've been, um, and my term is up and I put in my app tool and put in my application, I'm still interested, how do I know how many other people are there? Because it's all public. Right, but when you get there, but you don't know how many other people have already applied for it, so you should assume that you're going to show up and, you know, have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good faith situation where why are we subjecting volunteers to an interview process? It's not punishment, you know. Well, I think it's managing the... the Again, it goes to how the they're received yeah, and, and how about. this is communicated, and I, I have concerns. I actually that. do relate to what she's saying because... Uh, Volunteers in the past have reacted that way, yeah. but if we set the expectation to say it's a new game now, but we voted, I think you have to jump. So. You got to agree with that. Right. If it's been I done it's this way for you, okay. Millennia. So are we, are we? Do we? Do we have a game plan? I think so. so. And I'm gonna. You're gonna, you're gonna. You're gonna put out all the stuff that's available. Um, we're gonna. We're gonna get our our social media geniuses. Who? Uh, who, who they be? I just want to bring up a point you haven't raised. Um, in the past, by asking people to come in that have been long-serving volunteers who maybe normally wouldn't have been expected to, mm -hmm. they've realized that there's other people interested, and so they've stepped down to be an associate member. They assume they didn't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. So there's there's benefits to having a conversation. Yeah. And if the board's intention is to deepen the bench, as it were, um, the more conversation can't hurt. But I, I agree, it's it's the way you present it, it's the way you discuss yeah. it. Um, but this this doesn't have to be seen as a negative because I can think of examples where it was very positive in the past. Maybe it's not every example. I can think of half a dozen board people who were relieved to have the option of yes, stepping back absolutely. down to associate. Right. And we do have more associate positions. I actually have a list here which we'll get to everybody. There's dozen, there's over a We've dozen. We've never filled all these yeah. associates, I don't think. No. Don't and that's think a great not. conversation to have, but it doesn't need to happen in the formal structure. Oh, I disagree, that. because that's the time you're going to make the change. Right. Okay. All right. So, well, all right. Um, Bob. Um, I'm going to ask the board uh, to take out of order in, in some faster way two positions. Um, board of Health, I think, should be pretty mm -hmm. obvious. Yeah. And Board of Assessors have is a three-member board down to two. Oh, yeah. I didn't know about found that. their replacement. I'm, I'll check with the okay. town clerk if the uh, resignations are both effective June 30th and the current <coughs> members right. can serve, then I'll say put it off to June 19th. Okay. But, uh, the, you know, our appraiser came and saw me and said as soon yeah. as possible. Now, those that we understood, they will not have to be re-interviewed in June, obviously. Correct. Because we're interviewing them now, we would... Yes. So the, the, uh, others come the in board of assessors is done through the VASC, too? I thought that was a separate yes. appointment process. No, no, it's by us. No. Not like, not like income? Or no, no. So no. specifically, the we'll assessors have asked me, and then I assume that the Board of Health would also be your... We also have to do the... Um, fill your position. Yeah, FinCom and Biowall. that's a separate... Yeah, that, yeah. that's the FinCom That has a different we have have it. I think we have applications for oh, right. vacancy. Yeah. And are, they, are, they, are there any ones up? Oh, there might be more. Somebody termed out uh, Paul Perry, maybe? Oh, right. No, no, I have no to check to see out. who's expiring. So. Yeah, yeah. No one's terming out in, June. in a year. No, you weren't. But not this year. A year from June. Yeah. You were on there for so seven not. years? No, not not termed out um, a year back. It's just that it was up for a quick Oh, oh yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, those, those are all on the website under the clerks. Um, correct. The right. town clerk's um, spreadsheet, spreadsheet is the official and accurate. Right. So right. Are you, we can, we can, uh, we don't need to go through that. And we should try to make that. A, a, I'll, yeah. I'll make you a shorter, easier list of just the people who are expiring mm -hmm. and the vacancies on the boards right okay. now. Great. Uh, Barry, I right, do last have to raise up um, one VASC appointment. Um, there was a, I am the liaison to the Trails Committee. Yep. They have an app, they've had an applicant for an opening for I don't know how long, and, and they've already put their name in for. A they long put time. their name in a while. Well, ago. Let's just get that per person in. Put it into. Yeah. For, uh, because we're not going to make the final recommendation till the end, so there's no sense in. Right. This is an open yeah. appointment. Yeah. Okay. So, so we could appoint them yeah. yesterday if we okay. wanted. All right. I mean, obviously. All right. You know the person, good qualification. Yeah. I, I do. Yeah. Um, 
the, the I got well, that email let, too. That's yeah. your. Yeah. That's, your, that's, your, that's, your we'll just, that's your. Yeah. Let's so yeah, yeah, just yeah. get that on there first, rather than later. Okay. Uh, change of benefit. <laughs> Beneficial interest, Anthony's coal fire. Is there any? Yeah, no background, very common, no, no problems from the yep. police. Move the select board approve the change in beneficial interest for an annual all alcoholic beverage license for Anthony's coal fired pizza located at 48 Walker's Brook Drive. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Opposed? No. Five zero. Uh, regarding minutes, uh, I would recommend holding off on approval of the executive session minutes for 327 until we can see the full redacted copy of the minutes in the executive session. Because I, I hesitate to approve minutes where half the minutes are not there to see. Uh, Bob? You can certainly have that choice, but it's certainly legal to approve them in pieces. Oh, you, you can? Okay. Yeah, you can absolutely uh, divide up by topic. To see. Would it be better to do that for compliance purposes to get them? It's probably better to do things sooner than later. That's what I mean. Yeah. You also have the regular minutes from the 27th. I know. Okay. I didn't All right, to let's, I'll, I'll take them in order. Uh, move to approve the, uh, move the select board to approve the meeting minutes from, this is the regular session from March 27, 2018 as amended. 2018. March 27, 2018. Yeah. Is that, what pages are those? Six? It's well down toward the back. Yeah, I gotta get it because I had a couple comments. I just don't. I gotta find the page. I apologize. Mm. Um, that was a behemoth of a packet. It was. It was. Um, I know. I missed two of the things that I said. <laughs> I asked Bob to put in. <laughs> um, so on six A two. Oh good lord! Is that page two eighty six, Andy? Oh, uh, two eighty seven. What's the PDF page? Um, two eighty seven looks like. I'm looking for it. Six eight two. Six eight two. It's two eighty seven. I think that somewhere in here it talks about look for the word hazardous waste. Okay. Um, uh, Well, I can't find it, so that one I will have to let go. Uh, okay. It's not, it is certainly not uh, a do or die okay. situation. Um, you sure? I'm sure. Right. I think we can survive I to reconsider them yeah. without well, that change. For well, the majority, you need four. I don't know. No, not, not, not by Roberts. I'll let you go. Majority. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it is not the end, it's not an end of the world thing. Okay. It's a small correction, so let us not. Okie dokie. Anything else? About it. Anybody else have any comments? No further discussion. All those in favor? I'm sorry, you can't vote. <coughs> Close now. <nine>, four zero. <coughs> yep. Uh, move to that the select board approve the executive session minutes from March 27, 2018, as written. Second. Which we are allowed to do in open session. Correct. And if there's any suggestion for an amendment. Personally, I don't care, but it should be done. Do you know what page that's on? Is it, or did that was no, that, that was a separate, separate one? Email separate because email. Because it's not really it's public not until right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I gotta go find that. Uh, it it like, came separately. Yeah, I think yeah. you sent it on Monday. So, Caitlin, this thing on the clerk is the Bible. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's exactly the same thing that she's supposed to on our side too. The board of selectmen. It should link back to that. Okay. Yes. Time to choose. Yeah, well, you can't change anything. It's either up or down. All right, then, uh, okay. then, then that makes it. And we'll have another bite of the apple at some yeah. point. No, I, I agree. Oh, here she said it yesterday. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can. I mean, if it, yeah. So. So, uh, so, did you read the motion? I did. Any discussion? I think we had a second. So. I think yeah, we'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second it. I second it. All right. Hey, stop fighting. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? So it's 4 0. Move the select board approve the meeting minutes from April 12, 2018, as amended. I can't. You weren't here for that one. Pardon me? You were gone for that one. Oh, this is, was this, the, was this the 45 minute one? We this did? was the one you got sworn in. Oh, yeah, this is the one I I'll second. First thing in here. Call. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Any, uh, any no. discussion? No, sir. Somebody second it? Yeah. I think so. All those in favor? Opposed? Four, four zero one. Four, four, zero, no, you're zero. calling them right. Four yeah. zero, four, zero, four, zero, one. Four, zero one. one. Okay, <laughs> that's right because you weren't here. You were right. on a point. He listens to Bill Brown. No one else does. Yeah. Bill Brown's here. Right. All right, I'm 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 done. I, I have just two favors to ask of the of the board. Um, I think they're relatively minor. At our next meeting, I have office hours, and um, I. I found out I'm, I have to go to a award ceremony at the high school that night. Okay. So would somebody be willing to switch office hours? And I, I apologize in advance, but I need to be at the Which ceremony. night would that be? 15th. It is the 15th. Wait, right. was, your, uh, was your daughter prominently uh, featured I, in uh, the uh, Chronicle? Of course, yes. yes, yes, yes. yes. Do, you, do you get it? Uh, I do. Uh, no, I, I, I have. do not. Mm -hmm. so. okay. um, but but so if somebody could take, if I, somebody would be willing to switch. And then the other just, question. Just for the board also knows I'm always available and always if, if something happens because you can't predict it you're stuck in traffic yeah, you're I, I make okay. sure to show up will you go to the awards ceremony um, yeah. No, actually, I, I, I shouldn't even. I shouldn't even joke yeah, right, about yeah, it. Yeah, right, so my question, the other question is, I sent out um, some, uh, you know, one a pager. draft apology, one yeah. pager. Yeah, about, I saw that. Right. It's in the big packet. Yeah. The it big got packet. lost in the back, right. but I did it, see it. it. Did. Yeah. Do, do we. What were our just initial thoughts, instructions um, to tweak or scrap or? Why, why don't we take it one at a time? I can sure. cover your office hours on the fifteenth. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I think I think it's you know obviously I was the one who kind of sort of brought it up as mm -hmm. a discussion issue. Mm -hmm. um, you want to put that on your next agenda? Let's put it on the next agenda. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's got some benefit. I also, as I thought about it's it, it's in the packet here someplace. Yeah. I'll, yeah, um, it's, it's under nine nine a. It's a, nine a yeah. 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 And he sent me a board document. That first draft yeah. 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 And I appreciate you doing that. I, 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 yeah. I you yeah. know. Uh, uh, it yeah. just wasn't the right. Um, we need discussion on it. Yeah, I think I want I to agree. see this head more toward staff as primary, but we we are the backstop. Right, let's, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that's right. okay. Uh, that sounds good. So, Andrew, Andrew need, we need more discussion. Or a future meeting. You and I can talk. Yeah, I, I, soon. I don't even remember we'll your agenda for the next okay. meeting. Andrew, you have a, a motion. <laughs> uh, a, a, a motion to end the meeting. <laughs> yes. Sign the day. Well, if you want. No, we don't. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All those in favor. We are adjourned to 14, 14 minutes beyond my mental clock of what I want. <laughs>